Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Hashirama and Mito give all chakra to Naruto in fairy tale. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Josh Naruto and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1. A New Path. Order of Hai no Kuni and Odo no Kuni. Two boys, each 13 years old, stared across from each other as they stood within two statues, to be more precise, the craters they had formed on the side of the statues. These statues were replicas of Hashirama Senju and Madara Ichiha in memory of when they had fought for control of the village. In that battle, the Kaiubi had been present for most of it under Madara's control, however despite the high advantage, Hashirama had come out of it victorious, and Madara was believed to have died. In memory of their battle, two giant statues were built on opposite sides of the waterfall, Madara on the left, the side of Odo no Kuni and Hashirama on the right, the side of Hai no Kuni. However, now these two boys had practically destroyed the valley in their own battle. The first boy, Naruto Uzumaki, was a genin from Kanahagakur, a member of Team Kakashi, and the third Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi. The first two being Mito Uzumaki, wife of Hashirama Senju and the second being Kashina Uzumaki, Naruto's mother, though the young teen did not know this. The second boy was Sasuke Uchiha, one of the last surviving members of the Uchiha clan, an almost extinct clan. He too, was a member of Team Kakashi. Naruto was a teen with the height of 4 feet 8, he had bright blue eyes and spiky blonde hair. However, Naruto's greatest physical characteristic was his whisker marks, passed on from the demon imprisoned within his mother at the time of his birth. Naruto's outfit consisted of an orange jumpsuit with blue on the upper shoulders area, as well as up and down the front, a white swirl with a tassel on the left side, a red swirl on the back, a big white collar, orange pants, blue sandals, and a blue forehead protector. Sasuke stood at the height of 5 feet, just a bit taller than Naruto. Sasuke had spiky black hair with a blue tint and onyx eyes. He had lighter skin than his older brother, Itachi, had. Like many other members of his clan, his hair hung over both sides of his face to roughly frame his cheeks. His clothing consisted of a blue, short-sleeved shirt with a raised collar and the Ichiha crest on the back and wide arm warmers along with white shorts. At the moment though, both shinobi had altered their appearance due to special means. Naruto now looked more like a beast due to Kaiubi's chakra shroud enveloping him. Having the Kaiubi grant Naruto more of its usual chakra, it had enveloped Naruto's body as a bubbling chakra construct, taking on the shape of a one-tailed fox that had all the initial Jinchuriki form's physical traits, but the black rings that surrounded his more berserk-looking eyes were also present. In this form, Naruto could use his elongated, sharpened claws instead of his fists and run at greater speeds on all fours, making him more like a beast. The chakra itself in this form was noticeably denser almost like having a mind of its own. Sasuke, who had been given a cursed seal by Rachimaru of the Sanin, had managed to access level 2 of it changing his appearance greatly. The second level of the cursed seal had turned Sasuke's skin dark grey, his eyes yellow, lengthened his hair without losing its style, blue venom lipstick seemed to appear on his lips and gave him hand-shaped wings on his back that gave him the ability to glide and momentarily hover. You may be wondering why two teammates would be fighting to such lengths away from their home village. Well, the answer to that would be that Sasuke had left the village to gain power, seeing as how he didn't think he was getting it in the village to kill his brother Itachi. Naruto and a small team had been sent out after Sasuke, his team had been attacked by other shinobi and had no choice but to fight them, leaving Naruto with a mission to bring Sasuke home, however, as the battle pressed on, Naruto began to realize his friend was no longer his friend. Many would see Naruto as being dumb, stupid and overall a pain in the ass. To those who Naruto personally, they would see the true Naruto hiding behind a mask to protect himself due to years of abuse, both physically and mentally from the villagers due to his burden. Naruto was by no means a genius, but he was smart. He knew his father was the Yandame Hokage, Minato Namikaze, all it took was creating a cage bunch and having it henge into the Yandame and stand beside him. Simple as that. However, after bringing Tsunade Senju back to the village to be the Godame Hokage, Jiraiya, or as he affectionately called him, Iro Senen, had revealed the truth to Naruto, including his mother, Kashina Uzumaki. However Jiraiya didn't know a lot about Kashina, so Naruto was unable to learn that his mother was in fact the previous Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi. Now though, as Naruto stared across the expanse bridging the two statues, he could see only one of them was leaving alive today. As much as he wanted to somehow knock Sasuke out to follow through with his promise to Sakura, his third teammate, he could see Sasuke was aiming to kill him, and he had too much left to do than to simply die at the hands of his ex-friend. This is the perfect setting isn't it Naruto? Sasuke asked over the large gap, bringing Naruto out of his thoughts to glare at Sasuke with his slit eyes. Sasuke shook his head as he smirked. Yes that's right like I said, the time for talk is over well, finally it's ending this battle. 
Naruto simply growled at his former teammate, now knowing he had to attack with everything he had or all could be lost. Naruto held out his chakra-covered hand and began to pull chakra into the palm of it, forming an orb of chakra. You're right Sasuke, it's ending, one way of the other a the other side of Naruto, Sasuke had grabbed his left wrist and aimed at the ground where it began to spark with lightning, before literally exploding with purple lightning, an effect of the cursed seal. Turning the usual blue lightning into a more vile color. Both shinobi stared at each other before bounding out of their respective craters, soaring past the waterfall that ran between the statues, diving towards one another, their jutsu in their hands. Naruto's in his right hand which was cocked back and Sasuke's own jutsu in his left, also cocked back. As they finally neared one another, they thrust their hand forward, each calling out their respective jutsu. Rasengan. Tadori. As soon as the two just clashed, an explosion rocked the very foundations of the Valley of the End, causing the statues either side of them to crumble even more than they had. Blasts of pure chakra and lightning pulsed from the mixing of the two jutsu, sending shockwaves all around them. However, something happened to the two jutsu as they poured everything they had into it. Due to Naruto using every inch of power the Rasengan had, a sphere of pure black chakra began to form around them, solidifying causing the waterfall to flow over it as it grew large enough to actually make contact with the walls and break them away. Inside the orb of chakra, Naruto looked at Sasuke's murderous expression and sighed, deciding to push everything he had into the attack. With a loud roar, Naruto pushed against Sasuke with the Ichiha copying him. However, that seemed to be the breaking point as cracks began to run along the outside of the large orb of black chakra until it exploded. The very same chakra shot up to the sky, parting the clouds whilst also destroying the valley of the end at once. And just like that, it was gone in the blink of an eye, leaving nothing behind besides a war-torn valley, shreds of clothes, orange and blue and spots of blood. Neither Yuzumaki nor Ichiha were there. Unknown location. White expanse. A raspy voice spoke as Naruto blinked rapidly to clear his vision as he pushed himself up from his prone position. Looking around, still slightly dazed, all he could see was white. Not even walls or a door, simply white space as if there was no ending. What the hell is this? He asked himself as he slowly pushed himself off the ground. Wait ground. Looking down his eyes widened as just like everywhere else he looked it seemed like there was no solid ground, just space. Though the fact he was walking said there was something keeping him up. Maybe we can help you. Naruto immediately spun around at hearing the female voice, and once his eyes lay upon the people before him, his jaw dropped. Three beautiful women stood by each other. The middle woman had the appearance of a 30-year and was the perfect image of a goddess, standing at 5 feet 7 inches tall, weighing approximately 110 pounds. Though of relatively slender build she was nonetheless well-toned, curved and feminine, her skin was rather fair, though it did possess a slight olive tint to it. She had very long, down to her lower back, straight white hair. She garbed herself in an azure blue kimono, oddly befitting the white hair that spilled down the opening at the back. Her blue eyes shone with amusement as she looked at him. On the right was a similar dressed woman, a slender body as the kimono pronounced her curvy body, though she left the top more open, revealing more of her large breasts. Her skin was slightly more tan than the middle woman and had long red hair flowing down her back. Her eyes though were crimson and had pupils almost looking like slits. She too stared at him with something akin to amusement and mischief. The woman on the far left too was similarly dressed as her friends though while she wasn't as curvy as her friends, she still held the body of a goddess and even gave off a regal aura. She had night black hair that framed her face perfectly and also fell down her back. Her eyes were also black as she stared him with a small smile. Naruto though, stared at them each with a raised eyebrow. Who are you people? And what the hell is this place? He asked, deciding to just be blunt. The middle woman stepped forward with a smile. My name is Amaterasu, the sun goddess. On my right she gestured to the black-haired woman. Is Tsukiyomi, the moon goddess. And finally on my left she gestured to the woman with red hair. Is Inari, the kitsune goddess. And to answer your second question, this place is the place between planes of existence. The now identified Amaterasu explained. Naruto looked at each of them with a raised eyebrow before sighing. Right. Let me guess you're here to guide me to hell. So I'm dead then. He asked them. Why would you go to hell? Amaterasu asked, wondering why the young man thought that. I don't know. Naruto shrugged. Maybe it's because I housed the Kaiubi and knowing my bad streak of luck, I'd have to pay for its crimes, slaughter and whatever else it did because it's a part of me. In Naruto's confusion, Inari laughed at his explanation before sobering up. I'm the queen of all Kitsune, including the Kaiubi, and I can assure you the Kaiubi is no more. She told him making him wide-eyed. However, just because it's dead, does not mean its power is gone. Naruto didn't reply straight away and instead looked down at his stomach, pulling his jacket up and channeling chakra into where the seal would be. 
A moment longer and no seal appeared making taking a gulp of air as he realized what this could mean. I don't understand, I thought if I die, it dies and vice versa. He asked the Kitsune goddess. First off, I'll tell you that you now hold the Kyubi's chakra for yourself. Inari pointed out before carrying on with a grin, revealing a set of fangs. Now to explain, when your and the Ichiha's attack met with each other, it grew too powerful until somehow tearing a hole in the very fabric of reality. Even the three of us don't understand how this came to be, but it's clear the techniques you two sued and the enhancements to them clearly had a side effect. The hole in reality pulled you and the Ichiha, ripping you apart, molecule by molecule. The Kaiubi sensing you was going to die which would result in it dying itself, tried to force as much chakra as it could into body to survive, however, the poetic irony of this is that instead of the Kaiubi surviving, it destroyed itself by giving you everything it had by accident, out of desperation, until he was left defenseless and simply ceased to exist. Inari explained completely. Naruto frowned and thought at the explanation. Two if I have the Kaiubi's chakra and it no longer exists, does that make me a demon? He asked them seriously. No. Tsukiyomi answered him with a soft voice. But there was a side effect to this transference of power. She pushed almost dramatically as her sisters glanced at her and Naruto. You're immortal. Eh? Naruto asked dumbly. He gulped his thought of being immortal. What do you mean by immortal? The Madrasu sighed and began to explain. You gained everlasting youth which is another name for immortality, in the sense that you will stop aging once you the 20 year old mark and therefore cannot die from old age, however, you can be killed through other means, such as severe injury, very severe injury. She paused, tapping her chin with her finger. You will be able to take a lot of damage, you could be stabbed and still keep going, you will heal much faster, almost instantly, but should you be beaded, then there's no coming back from that. I see. Naruto muttered, clenching fists. Should I see this as a gift of a curse? Being able to help my loved ones much easier or having to watch everyone die around me whilst I stick as a 20-year-old? He asked, gritting his teeth. Hid, we know immortally can be a hard burden to bear. Inari spoke up with a slight growl. But when has having a burden ever stopped you before? Naruto sighed as he closed his eyes, absorbing everything as much as she could. What does this mean for me then? Why am I even here? He asked, opening his eyes. The Madarasu sighed heavily at this. You will need to leave your world, as it is now you can no longer maintain a physical body in your world due to your very existence, mind, body and soul being ripped from it. These are the laws that predate even us. We can do more than simply lead you to where a greater destiny awaits you and train you to be ready. She spoke solemnly, knowing how hard it would be for the young teen. Naruto stared at her in horror, anger and distress. Never seeing his friends again. Never returning home. Never being Hokage. Was this all his life held? Pain and loss. So that's it, huh? I get played a bad hand when I was born, and since them all I'm good for is being the whipping boy for pain and loss. Wow, you guys are really making me motivating to just being a bigger pawn for whatever game it is you guys are playing. He said, sarcasm literally dripping from his tone. The Madarasu sighed once more, and her sisters let her do the speaking much to her annoyance. Naruto, I can understand where you're coming from. But you can also look at this a good thing as well. You will be able to start a new life in other world, start from scratch, leave all burdens of being the Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi behind, and be your own man. I won't go and say everything will work out for the best, because frankly I'm no seer, I'm a sun goddess, and I can't see the future. But what I can see is darkness lurking in the new world you will be going to. Whilst there, you can make new friends, find new loved ones, and even have some lovers. She smirked as he blushed, but was glad he seemed to be cooling down. Naruto sighed in resignation, choosing to ignore the lover's bit, even if his cheeks were red. You mentioned you train me. How? And what in? He asked, wanting to know the specifics before anything else happened. The world you will be going to will be dangerous, and you'll need to be powerful. I will be teaching you how to be a god slayer, and to use what I like to call, the white flame of Amaterasu and other techniques, but we'll explain about those later on. Amaterasu explained with a grin at how powerful Naruto would one day be. God slayer? Naruto asked confused, something that was happening a lot lately. What's that? We'll explain it all fully when we leave your world for good and take you where you're meant to be. Tsukiyomi answered with a sigh. Naruto went wide-eyed realizing he would never see anyone again and turned to Amaterasu with a pleading look. If we're leaving this world uh, can I say goodbye to one person? Please, just give me this one thing. He pleaded. Inari sighed. Who do you want to see? She asked, getting ready to send him down to his world for one last time. The one person I see is a mother. He answered simply. Fine, but I'll only be able to send you down there for a short time, you won't have your physical body, so you'll be more like a spirit. Don't take too long. Inari explained, and with a wave of her hand, Naruto vanished. Are you sure this is okay? 
Tsukiyomi asked with a worried frown. Yes, Naruto needs to say goodbye to give him some closure. He's going to have a difficult life ahead of him where he's going. Amaterasu explained with a smile. Besides, he isn't the only one who needs closure. Tsukiyomi and Inari remained silent, simply waiting to take Naruto to the new world. Hi no kuni. Hanahagakur. Hokage residence. When I got there, it was like a war zone. However there was no sign of either Naruto or Sasuke, there was the chakra residue of the Kaiubi and Sasuke's cursed seal all over the place. It was like they had just vanished. For all we know they could be dead. Kakashi explained to Tsunade who was holding her head down, and if Kakashi had to guess she was holding her tears in for when he left, so she could cry later over the death of the son she never had. I see. Was all Tsunade could possibly say while gripping a piece of Naruto's clothes that Kakashi summoned pack and had picked up for proof there had been a battle. Kakashi bowed his head solemnly at the potential loss of two of his students. I'm sorry Tsunade-sama. I should never have taught Sasuke the Chidori. I never knew he would use it against his teammate. He apologized, ashamed of teaching an assassination jutsu to a mentally unstable young boy with only revenge on his mind. No I should never have sent a team of genin after that Ichiha. Tsunade gritted out, practically spitting out the name Ichiha. I should have never sent Naruto. She murmured almost lifelessly. You're dismissed Kakashi, I know being here is the last place you want to be right now. Kakashi bowed his head once more. I'm sorry Tsunade-sama. He apologized once more before leaving in a puff of smoke. As soon as he left, Tsunade let the tears fall, splashing onto the desk as she hiccuped, gripping the last remaining piece of clothing of Naruto's clothes. Damn it Gaki, you weren't meant to die. You were supposed to get strong and take the hat from me. She murmured and inwardly cursed the necklace she had given him and then herself for giving it to him. Wow, tears for me, I don't know what to say. Her head snapped up in shock at the familiar voice, and her eyes widened even further when she saw Naruto standing on the other side of her desk, looking just like he did after the battle with Sasuke. Like he had been beaten to death and stabbed repeatedly. Naruto she asked tentatively. Is that really you? Naruto smiled, almost sadly. Yup, it's me. He gave a nod. Before Naruto could stop her, she had already jumped over the desk and rushed to hug him. Just before she reached him he closed his eyes as he felt her pass through him. Tsunade herself blinked in shock as she seemed to phase right through the smaller blonde, causing her to stumble in order to stop and turn around, to see Naruto's body flicker and ripple as if he wasn't really there, but just a mirage. W what? Tsunade asked, confused as hell at what was going on. Sorry I should have warned you before you tried that. Naruto apologized, scratching the back of his head sheepishly. He sighed though when he saw Tsunade still looking at him in shock and confusion. It really is me only not physically. So, you're dead. Tsunade noted, lowering her head, thinking she was either seeing things or he was a ghost. No. Tsunade looked up quickly, and Naruto was sure he heard her neck crack at the speed. I'm alive, but I don't belong here anymore. I don't understand it completely but, I can't exist in this world, or that was what I was told anyway. Seeing her confused look he shrugged. I was told that I was needed elsewhere, in another world, where I can start a new life. The Kaiubi's dead, killed itself actually which is ironic considering it was trying to save its own ass. Seeing Tsunade beginning to cry, he felt his own tears pricking his eyelids. I wish I didn't have to go, I still have so much to do here, and then there's Hokage, but he looked away for a moment, and Tsunade understand instantly. You want to start a new life, where no one knows you as the Jinchuriki. She finished for him. She clenched her hand as Naruto looked over to her. But I don't want you to leave. You're the reason I even came back to this village and became Hokage. Without you here I have no reason to stay here. She exclaimed in frustration, sadness and anger. Naruto smiled sadly at her and wished he could hug her to ease them both at this new change. I wish I could stay but people need me elsewhere and I know I'm going to miss my friends and everything else here, but, like you said, I get to start clean, I won't be resented for being who I am, and from what I'm beginning to understand about this new world, I'm going to it's going to be quite fun. He grinned for a moment and Tsune chuckled along with him. From what I understand, when I died and the Kaiubi managed to somehow bring me back at the cost of its own life, I no longer have a place in this world. Seeing her slowly crying he smiled sadly. Just so you know you're the mother I never had, and no matter where I am, I'll always think of you, and I doubt I could ever forget about you. He smiled through the tears that were slowly rolling down his face, and he didn't bother trying to wipe them away. Tsunade knowing he would be leave forever, decided to come out and broach a certain subject with him. Naruto, if I'm never going to see you again, then you should know about your parents, your father was. Minato Namakas. Naruto finished and almost laughed at her gaping look. And my mother was Kashina Yuzumaki, I know. Hiro Senen told me after we brought up back. 
I won't say I'm happy about my father being who he is, but I just have to deal with it and believe he sealed the Kyubi within me for a reason. Tsunade gave a nod while inwardly promising to beat Jureya for telling him and not informing her he had. Naruto seeing her still looking down smiled sadly once more. Tsunade, this village still needs you. I need you to look after this village and my friends. I know you never really wanted to be Hokage, but this village needs you now more than ever. With Akatsuki, I have no idea how they'll react to Kaiubi being killed. Tsunade gave him a nod and smirked through her tears. I'll protect the village and your friends with everything I have but do one thing for me. Lose that damn mask you hide behind, if you're starting off in some new world, then be your real self, like you are now. She almost begged, preferring this more relaxed and serious Naruto than the goofball version, though she did find it cute. Naruto chuckled and scratched his whisker mark sheepishly. You got yourself a deal okay san. Tsunade almost burst into tears again at the affectionate term. Tsunade gulped in a breath as she saw his legs beginning to fade away. Naruto, you were the son I never had, good luck where you're going and give me some grandkids. She laughed softly as tears ran down his face, while his cheeks lit up in a blush. Goodbye Sachi. As she watched Naruto finally vanish with a tear-filled sigh, she noticed some tears splash on the ground. Narrowing her eyes at them, she walked over to them while rubbing her eyes. Bending down she touched her finger to the tears and found that they were in fact real somehow. Truly realizing she would never see Naruto again she collapsed into a heap and began to cry even harder. She wouldn't be found until Shizune entered the office in the morning to see her collapsed on the floor. Unknown location. White expanse. In the infinite white space, Naruto reappeared whipping his tears away from saying goodbye to one of the most important person to him. Shaking his head to clear his mind, he looked ahead of him to see the three goddesses waiting with calm expressions. So this it then? He asked with a raised eyebrow. The Madarasu stepped forward and smiled slightly, knowing he was in pain of leaving everything behind. Yes. Before we can take you to your new world, we will be taking you to our realm to train you in everything we know. When you turn 20 you will stop aging. At that time we will be forced to send you to a place called Earthland. The world where you will live. She smiled Naruto nodded. What would you be teaching me? He asked wanting to know what he would be able to do. The Madarasu smiled as she held up a hand. When we're through with you, you will be able to use my white flame as easy as you can breathe. Her hand suddenly came to life with a so-called white flame. Even from where he stood, Naruto could feel the raw power and heat coming from it as it burned on her hand. It looked just as it was called, white fire, a beautiful but obviously deadly fire. My white flame is what is known as a type of magic called caster magic. A form of magic where the user, this being you or me, uses the magic stored within them and releases it. Awesome. Naruto whispered in awe as a Madarasu shook her hand, dispersing the fire and showing Naruto how her skin was just as clear as it had been earlier. However, something clicked in his mind to what she had just said. Magic. That's real. He asked shocked. We will explain that later on, in your training. Tsukiyomi stepped forward next. I will be teaching you how to use a form of magic called Requip, a holder type magic that allows users to store items in pocket dimensions. In my case, these items would be swords or other types of weapons, most importantly, my unique and personal sword, Sword of Tsukiyomi, she held her hand out, and a complex seal lit in the color blue around her hand, before a shape began to take form in her hand. With a flash of light, the seal vanishes revealing a sword in her hand. It resembled a normal katana. The only decoration was the dark blue tsuba, which was a hexagon instead of a rectangle. The two sides parallel to the blade were long, whereas the four sides above and below the blade were shortened, making it into almost a diamond or prism-like shape. The handle was also dark blue. This is my personal sword, as stated by the name of it, I will grant you the usage of this amongst many more. I will also be training you in the art of sword fighting. Naruto stared in awe at the beauty of the sword and began to feel more pumped up about this new world he would be entering. Beautiful. He uttered getting a smile full of pride from Tsukiyomi for the praise towards her sword. Whatever. Inari said, waving her dismissively towards her sister who glared mildly at her. I won't be doing any of that special stuff, but I will be training you into how to use the Kyubi's power. Now that you have immortality, the transformation won't cause you damage anymore, so when I'm through with you, you'll be able to transform up to the ninth tail, that's a promise. I see. Naruto nodded taking everything. Are you ready Naruto? Amaterasu asked, stepping closer to the blonde. Once you say yes, there will be no coming back. Naruto stared the sun goddess in the eye with an aura exuding determination and confidence. Let's do this. He said, getting a smile from them as Amaterasu clicked her fingers and they vanished from the white expanse. The bee continued in chapter 2. 27 years later. Chapter 2. 27 years later. Kingdom of Fiori. Orth Woodland. 27 years later. Naruto Uzumaki was now 40 years of age. 
his physical attributes had increased by leaps and bounds, whilst he currently wore an entirely different outfit than the orange monstrosity he had worn before leaving his homeworld. He stood at the height of 6 feet 2 with bright blue eyes and spiky blonde hair with jaw-length bangs, framing either side of his face. Naruto's outfit mainly consisted of a white sleeveless long jacket with crimson trimmings over his chest, around the edges and hem with no shirt underneath, displaying the necklace of the Shadai Hokage, a turquoise gem with two small silver balls either side. He also wore long hakama in white that went down to his ankles, wrapped around his hakama acting like a belt was a long crimson sash that had the loose ends to dangle down. He also wore white sandals and located at the top of his right arm, just below his shoulder was the fairy tail's crest in pure white with a crimson outline. In front of Naruto was what he would call a pain in the ass, but to others they would call it a demon. I don't have time for this. He muttered to himself he cracked his neck. This job was supposed to be simple, save a couple villagers from a demon, easy money if I say so myself. They neglected to mention the demon was in fact a 35 feet horned beast that breathed fire. He mumbled to himself in annoyance as the demon in front of him inhaled. The demon itself was just a he said, a 35 feet demon that towered over everything, large horns either side of its head and large clawed hand that could cut the ground in half with a single swipe. Naruto shook his head at the demon's intentions. Thought you would have learned fire doesn't work on me. He shook his head as he held his hand out to his side, where a purple seal consisting of complex pattern designs appeared around his hand. Requip. Sword of Tsukiyomi. Just like the goddess had done once before, the sword appeared in a flash of purple light. It resembled a normal katana. The only decoration was the dark blue tsuba, which was a hexagon instead of a rectangle. The two sides parallel to the blade were long, whereas the four sides above and below the blade were shortened, making it into almost a diamond or prism-like shape. The handle was also dark blue. The demon paid no mind to what Naruto had done and exhaled a large blast of fire that consumed Naruto immediately. However, just as the fire was about to overcome him, it began to be sucked into what looked like a vortex as it was pulled back, twisting around a certain point. Eventually the demon could see its fire all aiming for a specific place and was able to see through the fire as it squinted its eyes. Standing in the middle of the blast of fire was Naruto, and he was inhaling the fire as if he was breathing air, his friends who knew his eating habits would in fact say the sight was just like a fire being sucked into a vortex. Ugh. Naruto spat out as he swallowed the last bit of the fire. I thought it was bad the first time, but it just gets worse. He shivered as he almost gagged but managed to hold it back. How the hell do you stomach that disgusting fire, huh? He asked the demon only to receive an angry roar. Right, demon, Dumbus, can't talk. Shaking his head, he moved into a stance, holding his sword specifically as his eye narrowed into slits. I'm done playing around, I want to get back to the guild for some relaxation, and you're slowing me down. His tone turned serious and deadly, and if the demon had good instinct, he would have run. With a grin, Naruto lunged at the demon, sword held high. It's been 20 years since I came to this world known as Earthland, and I have to say, it was fun. I'm now technically 40 years old though because of my new immortality I only look 20. Ever since I came here I've been able to start a new life with a clean slate, I was no longer a Jinchuriki, human sacrifice, dope, instead I was respected after my fellow mages witnessed my new power I was able to build up, thanks to Amaterasu, Tsukiyomi and Inari. Speaking of training. I now have only one energy source, magical energy. Apparently when I crossed realms or maybe it was when I died and came back, my large chakra capacity had been converted to magical energy. This meant I'd lost all of my jutsu since they were created via chakra. The only real loss though was the Rasengan my father had created, though I had managed to recreate my cage bunshin, though not to extent I could with chakra. Anyway, for the seven and a half years I was with the three goddesses, I trained till I drop. Amaterasu was a slave driver though considering how hard it was to actually learn her form of lost magic, it's no surprise. I had managed to eventually learn and master, to an extent, the white flame of Amaterasu and became what was known as a god slayer. However, before I had left their realm of existence, she had warned me to only use the magic in dire need or when I had no choice. She had then explained that there was another form of lost magic similar to my own called Dragon Slayer magic, which was incredibly rare, but the lost magic I had been taught was almost non-existent, and there was no telling of who would try to gain such power. That didn't stop me from swallowing and eating fire though, I just put it off as something I could do and offered no further explanation to anyone. In the 20 years I have lived in Earthland though, I hadn't had to fight anyone strong enough to use my god slayer magic. My second sensei, Tsukiyomi had taught me how to use Requip like she said she would. Requip was the magic ability of being able to summon and store weapons in and from a pocket dimension. With this I could summon Sword of Tsukiyomi and so many more weapons at any time. 
This and my enhanced strength, speed, immortality and everything else I gained from training to be a god slayer, besides the fire of course, were the reasons I had become so well known in this world. It kinda makes me curious about what they'd say when they find out what I could really do. My final sensei, Inari was probably the hardest piece of training I had to undergo. Having to train and using the Kaiubi's energy, yes energy, apparently when my chakra was converted, Kaiubi's was also. This was a plus in my book since with it being fueled with magic energy it wasn't as volatile. Being immortal and having his speed regeneration was also a large help since once I go four tails or higher, my skin is torn off to make me more fox-like. Not a pretty sight if I say so myself. When I had come to Earthland 20 years ago I had gone out to explore and train for 13 years. Yes, seems like a long time to explore I know, but at the time I relished in the peace and traveling through an unknown world. That was why around 7 to 8 years ago I decided I was lonely and wanted to have some company, this lead me to my current guild. Flashback. Magnolia Town. Fairy tale, huh? Naruto stared up at the large mansion-like building. The exterior was pyramidal in shape, the size of the floors decreasing the higher into the building. This stopped though, short of the pointed dome topping the summit of the building. It truly was an amazing building that screamed fun especially if what he'd heard about them was any indication. A large board was situation above doorway with fairy tale printed on it large enough for anyone in a distance to see it. Walking over to the front double doors, he grasped the handle and swung it open. Stepping inside he took a good look at the place. The inside was similar to a large lunch hall, several long benches stretched across its length with a bar. Several waitresses from what he could see were milling about. Located beside the bar was what looked like a request board where the fairy tale mages obviously earned a living from by completing client requests, similar to mercenaries. Another thing he noticed was that dozens of unfamiliar faces stared at him, startled by the sudden entry and the door shutting close behind him as a slam. Just as he went to take a step forward, a body slammed into him though since he was tall and obviously bigger in build, the person toppled backwards with a loud oof, causing him to look down at what struck him. Immediately seeing, not what but rather who hit him, he blinked. White hair, blue eyes, golf clothing a eh, what are you some emo punk? Naruto inquired with a raised eyebrow, quite used to the many different types of people since coming to Earth land. A young girl who was now red in the face, looked up at him with fury, despite the difference in size and obvious age. At once she jumped back to her feet clutching a sheet of paper in her hand. What the hell is that supposed to mean you jerk? She asked, glaring with a hand on her hip and a scowl marring her features. It means what it means. Naruto shrugged before sighing as the young girl's face went red from anger. Look, I came to this guild because I was told this was a good place to look for work. So where the hell's the master of this place, hmm? He asked, while noticing how everyone was staring at them with raised eyebrows and sharing fearful glances at the girl. The girl wasn't listening to him though. Oh really? Who the fuck was that then? She asked with an almost arrogant smirk. Someone a little girl like you shouldn't know about. Naruto replied with a deadpan expression with a tiny bit of boasting, he may be older, but he still liked to rile people up. Little girl. The girl shouted with rage clouding her features. Do you have any idea who you're talking to? She shouted. Naruto sighed and rubbed his temple feeling a headache coming on. No no, I don't, and to be frank, right now I couldn't give two shits. He patted her shoulder walking past. Now, I'll find someone my own age, or close it, and actually find out where the master is. As he walked past her, he could practically feel the dark aura pouring from her, her anger surfacing even more from his dismissal of her. Devil's right hand. Behind him, her right hand suddenly transformed into a devil-like feature, freaking out many people who were new to the sight. Grinning darkly, the girl span around to face Naruto's back and rushed him with her arm pulled back. Naruto sensing danger, span around as well and was able to place an arm in the way as she punched him releasing a blast of energy at the same time. Tables and benches were blown away as a crater formed underneath their feet from the force. Everyone watched in apprehension at the smoke cloud that had enveloped the two people. Hmm, you're strong, I'll admit that they heard the man mutter before the smoke was blown away by a pulse of magic energy from the blonde. To their shock he held the girl's hand with his own hand, gripping it as if he had been punched lightly. They saw the white-haired girl's eyes were wide in disbelief as well. But you're not strong enough to defeat me, not yet anyway. Before anyone could so much as breathe, Naruto lifted his other hand up and flicked the girl in the forehead lightly, but to their surprise, she was pushed back several feet as Naruto released her devil-like hand. So, little girl, you never told me who you were. Naruto commented, to everyone else seeing a twenty-something man calling her a little girl was odd, since he couldn't have been much older than her, but they didn't know he was in fact 33. The younger girl let the comment about her age or size slide for now, either one pissed her off and decided to answer the first person to ever stop her punches, besides the master that was. M. Marahin and I'm 12, I'm not a little girl. 
she shouted regaining her confidence. Naruto laughed lightly, being reminded of himself at the now identified Marahin's attitude. You remind me a lot of myself when I was a kid. He commented with a grin. Tell you what, should I join Fairy Tail, you come back to me when you're say 20 and much stronger, I'll fight you then, but right now I'm too strong for your current level. He reasoned with her, though what annoyed her even more was that he didn't sound arrogant when he spoke, just confident and assured of himself. Boy. You think I'm weak. Marahin shouted as energy exploded out of her. Satan smrew. Satan's soul, a black magic circle erupted over her head, enveloping her in black light. As the aura faded, it revealed Marahin in a form that most could easily recognize as her devil mode. Large elf-like ears, devil wings, a tail, claws and a scar on her right eye, showing off her demonic look. Naruto frowned at the strange sight, but held his ground as the black miasma faded away into nothingness. When he could see, Naruto frowned, he had not expected something like this. Maybe she was stronger than he had anticipated after all. What in the hell is that? He muttered to himself, though Marahin heard him. The young man with white hair and tan skin swallowed nervously. Oh boy. Sis is getting pissed he muttered to himself in slight fear. Take over. Marahin grinned fearlessly in reply. You know, demon skin is the second strongest in defense and attack. Let's see you stand up to this. Without another word, she flapped her wings and struck her tail at him which he moved his head out of the way in time for. Since he was so used to pain, he barely took notice of the cut on his cheek from the attack, though Marahin did and was about to grin victoriously, until the cut healed over instantly. What the fuck was that? I've never seen healing like that before, what or who the fuck is he? Um, kinda like my Kaiubi transformations Naruto noted absently to himself as he grabbed the tail and yanked on it, bringing Marahin to him. Before she reached him though, she vanished in a burst of speed. Trusting his battle instincts better than his eyesight, he looked up in time to see Marahin charging up a ball of dark energy. With a sigh, Naruto held his hand out. A seal circle appeared in front of his hand. I'll entertain you for now. Requipe long katana appeared in his hand with a flash. Sword of Tsukiyomi. He gripped the sword as Marahin finished powering up her attack. Soul extinction. Marahin shouted, thrusting the orb of dark energy down at Naruto. Everyone in the guild began to run to the far edges to avoid the conflict of the two. With the swing of his sword, Naruto slashed upwards, releasing a long blade of energy to slice though the orb of energy, splitting the orb into two splits, each hitting the ground either side of Naruto, kicking up the wood flooring and blowing benches and tables away for the second time. This is getting tiresome. Naruto muttered as he looked up at the wide-eyed Marahin, after watching him cut straight through her technique like a knife through butter. I told you before Mirachan gets stronger and then fight me. A seal appeared around his sword and once it vanished, so did the sword. W who the hell is this guy? Macau interjected. Your guess is good as mine. Wakaba shrugged helplessly. To have this guy treat Sis like a weakling he's gotta be pretty damn strong. The same young man with white hair and tan skin. Oh oi elfman, she's getting pissed again. Another mage shouted in worry. The now mentioned elfman looked over to see his sister soar downwards at the blonde who just stared in a bored manner. Before she could reach Naruto though, a giant hand grasped her in mid-air halting her and causing Naruto to look up at a towering dark and demonic figure that was several times larger than him both. What is going on here? The creature's voice boomed through the guild's hall. Mira-chan, you need to watch that anger of yours. The demonic creature said with a sigh as it placed a now shivering and fearful Marahin on the ground where she returned to normal. A master? Marahin started in fear, looking up at the looming figure. Master? Naruto muttered before raising an eyebrow. You're the master? He asked a fearsome creature incredulously. The master turned his eyes to the blonde. Hmm. A newcomer? He asked. But of course. Now, I was wondering if I would ever meet you. Just let me fit into something more comfortable. Naruto looked upon him in shock as he suddenly grunted while shrinking down to a much smaller size and revealing himself to be an extremely short man. He had black eyes and was growing bald with only the outer rims of his head containing white hair. He also had a thick white mustache. His member stamp was located on his chest. What kind of magic is that Naruto thought in shock? I master Makarov. Nice to meet you. He waved at Naruto before jumping onto a table to be eye level with Naruto. Everyone else around the guild began to move around them wondering what was going on as Marahin stayed in place close to Naruto. So, Naruto, it's nice to finally meet you. Naruto's eyes widened in surprise at that. You know my name, even though I never mentioned it since I've come here. He pointed out with a raised eyebrow. Makarov laughed before pulling out a book from somewhere. It's hard not to know you. And being one of the guild masters and one of the ten wizard saints, he turned deadly serious. I need to know people like you. Naruto frowned as a guild member held their hand up. Um, master, what do you mean by people like you? The person asked. S-class mages of course. 
Makarov chirped out with a laugh as everyone's jaw dropped, none more so than Marahin's whose face went to Shen, realizing she had picked a fight with someone so strong. Makarov calmed down and coughed to get everyone's attention. Naruto Uzumaki, S-Class Mage, alias the Immortal, said to be able to survive after being stabbed in the heart. Currently 33 years old, hasn't aged a day in over a decade. And rumored to have never lost a battle. Makarov smiled as everyone in the guild was currently gaping, having heard of a person called the Immortal all over Fiori. From what they heard he was a good guy but very powerful, obviously considering his class, but despite being good he was still to be feared. Hey, I always found the Immortal to be a bit too blunt and simple to be honest. Naruto shrugged. I hadn't realized I'd become so famous though. He looked at the master with such piercing eyes that the old man knew if he hadn't been such an experienced mage, he would falter under the stare. I'm not stupid, you know more than what you're telling, but that's all you're telling them, I like to keep things a secret. After all, if my allies don't know then how can my enemies? You see what I mean? Hmm, I understand all that. Makarov gave a little wave as if in dismissal before locking eyes with Naruto. But before I make my decision, why should I let you join us, no, better question why does someone as strong as you want to join us? Naruto chuckled mirthlessly. I've been traveling alone for a long while, and it can get lonely. With my situation as it is, I'm sick of traveling alone, and I'd prefer to have a place I can call home, where I can settle down for once and have a place I can go to relax with my friends. The words friend seemed strange to him since he had been alone for so long. Granted he'd had company before, partners for mercenary jobs and the like. And he wasn't a stranger to a woman's body either thanks to Amaterasu deciding it was time he finally lost his virginity before he began a new life, though he wasn't going to complain anytime soon, but he hadn't had a true friend since he'd arrived to the new world. Makarov could sense the word felt foreign to the younger man, and he knew he was a good guy, and especially a guy fit for fairy tale. He slowly reached behind him putting Naruto on guard and making every tense, but when he brought his hand back around there was a collective face plant into the ground as Naruto's sweat dropped. In his hands was a stamp with a fairy tale crest on it. Where do you want it? Makarov asked with a wide grin. That's it. Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. You're just accepting me like that. Yup. Makarov nodded happily. Burahin who had been silent the entire time from thinking of how she had attacked an S-class mage, and he could probably have killed her from what she'd seen, though she hadn't gone full out either since they were in the guild hall, but it was still a nasty thought. But now, hearing the master accept him so easily struck something inside her. What? You mean this newbie can join just like that? She shouted indigently pointedly ignoring the fact he was S-class. What the fuck? Naruto chuckled at the small girl as Makarov held the stamp up. So, where do you want to broadcast here with the greatest guild? He asked, inwardly happy at having such a strong person with him, though he didn't know everything he could do, a person didn't get to S-class for no reason, and that was all he needed to know. Besides, having him join was also giving him a home. Naruto gave a nod and pointed at the top of his right arm, just below his shoulder. I'll have it there, and in the brightest white possible with a red outline, if that's possible. Naruto asked, wanting to have the crest the same color as his outfit and also his flame. And do, Naruto-chan. Makarov grinned, channeling energy into the stamp and pressing it onto the intended spot for a moment before pulling away to reveal a perfect symbol of fairy tale, pure white with a crimson outline standing out just like he wanted. Looks great. Naruto grinned, happy to be accepted into the guild and have a new home. As Makarov watched some of the fairy tale mages welcome Naruto into the guild, he frowned in thought. His magical energy was similar to Natsu's, but different at the same time it felt more raw and potent. Hell, it felt as if a dam was holding it back, and if it was knocked down or opened up, then it would all come crashing down on us Hmm, he's a mystery indeed. Flashback end. Ever since I've joined the guild, things have been a bunch of fun. I have true friends I can count on now, I wouldn't give it up for the world. Naruto yanked his sword free from the demon's head and pulled a face at the blood on his blade. Giving it a shake, the blood was flung onto the grass before he sent the sword back into the pocket dimension. Cracking his neck he looked up as the sun was beginning to disappear in the distance. Is it that late already? He thought before he heard footsteps behind him. Naruto, are you finished? He grinned as he turned around to face his female companion. She was a beautiful young woman with long scarlet hair and brown eyes, though her right eye was actually artificial. She had a slender figure he would describe as simply amazing, and like most females he knew recently she had large breasts. She wore custom-made armor by Hart Crew Smiths, a blue skirt, and black boots. She was currently wielding her sword. There's a Chan, really, you have so little faith in me? He asked in mock hurt, holding a hand to his chest. Urza gave him a look, though her lip twitched as she held out her sword, and just like with Naruto's swords, hers vanished in the way of a magical seal. That's a pointless question and you know it. 
she said bluntly, knowing he was joking but deciding to answer anyway. I trust no one else more than I do you. She said honestly, a small smile forming. After all, how could I not trust the man who saved me when I most needed it? Naruto smiled back and thought back to when they first met. Flashback. Naruto Tower of Heaven Island. It had been a couple months now since Naruto had joined Fairy Tail. Marahin still liked to pick fights with him, whether it was because she saw him as some rival or she just wanted to kick his ass, he didn't know. Though most of the time it was her sister Lysana and big brother Elfman that usually dragged her away before she could hurt herself. Naruto though liked it in a way that someone was aiming to become stronger than her, especially from the way he'd secretly watched her train, while mumbling about blonde bastard, he had also met an interesting person who he had taken a liking to, Natsu Dragneel, a dragon slayer, a fire-based one at that in fact. What were the chances that a guild would have a god slayer and a dragon slayer? Either way, the boy had a ton of potential, the same as another kid, Grey Fullbuster, someone who used a magic called Ice Make. Everyone else in the guild seemed to have a ton of potential just awaiting to be tapped into. At the moment, Naruto was now catching a ride out to an island on a medium-sized speedboat, captained by an old man and his dog. Since he had no other passengers the old man gave him a discount for the short trip across the sea. Naruto leaned over the boat and enjoyed the breeze as it brushed against his face, blowing his longer hair back. It was times like these where he wished he could simply freeze time and enjoy it. Leaning back in the back, he pulled a sheet of paper from his Hakama's pocket and read the job that was on it. B-class job. Bread level. Medium. Pay. 300,000 jewels. Task. Group of cultists illegally captured citizens and are using them as slaves. Using them to build Tower of Heaven Aka-R system in order to resurrect the spirit of the Black Mage Zeref. Take out cultists, free the illegal slaves, and destroy the tower to prevent resurrection of Zeref. Naruto frowned at the request finding that whoever could build such a structure had to be powerful. This is one of those missions where it says it's a low class, then it becomes a higher class, isn't it? This is the mission to Nami no Kuni all over again I just know it. And again, the old man lets me do S-class jobs, I only took this one for easy money, he shrugged to himself as the boat suddenly stopped. Land ho. The old man shouted from his steering wheel as the dog barked in response from beside him. Naruto stood up looking with a stretch and a yawn to see they had reached the target island. Nodding his head to himself, he tossed the old guy a tip before jumping off boat and onto shore. Thanks for the ride old man. He said, giving a small wave over his shoulder as he walked away. No problem, fairy tail looks out for one another. Naruto looked back to see the man flashing his own fairy tail crest on his wrist as he turned the boat around to head back in the other direction. Huh, no wonder I didn't see an engine. He was using his own magic to power the boat the blonde thought with a raised eyebrow before he walked away from the shore. He looked down at the paper in his hand to see it suddenly burn away. What the hell? He muttered, shocked by it before shaking his head and turning to look up at the massive structure in front of him. So this is Tower of Heaven, what a bunch of nut jobs. Alright first I break out the slaves then, and then I bring this place down. Looking down from the tower, he focused his eyes on the main gate in front of him. Clenching his fist, he cocked his arm back and punched the gate forming an indent before the gate was blasted off its hinges and smashed into a wall. With the gate gone, he could see several paths and tunnels. Holding his hand out in front of him, five tendrils of magic burrs from his palm and struck the ground in front of him. Repurik Shan. Replication, the five tendrils that struck the ground immediately shot upwards in a blob of energy that began forming a human shape until they revealed five perfect copies of Naruto. Unlike my cage bunch and I can't form a sign and they pop out of me, this was the closest I came to recreating it. I can't summon as many as I used to, but these clones are more or less replicas of me in every way, and they don't die after one strike. Even better, because they are a part of my magic, everything they learn goes straight back to me. They're perfect he gave a nod to the clones which were returned as they shot off. Naruto crossed his arms and closed his eyes waiting patiently for the clones to give him information on the location of the slaves, since it would be safer to rescue them first, well it would be easier to carry on the mission if they were rescued. After a few minutes one of his clones dispelled relaying the location of the slaves to him. Nodding to himself, he descended down one of the staircases while keeping on guard. Underground slave cells. Down in the cells the slaves sat quietly agonizing over their predicament. All of them looked over in fear as there was a creaking sound coming from the cell gate as it suddenly swung open. They all gulped as they watched the trembling form of a shackled Urza enter with a shove from the guards. Hey me San you're okay. One of the slave children exclaimed in worry. Idiot. Look at her. How can you say she's okay? An older boy shouted, pointing at Urza as she trembled on her spot. What about Jell? He said he was going to get past those guys to save you, another young boy said before a hand squeezed his shoulder to stop him. 
they all looked over to see an old man stopping the young boy from speaking. Just let her sit quietly, poor girl must have suffered a lot in the punishment chamber. He told them sternly and softly as Urza didn't respond to any of them, just kept slowly walking forward. But what about Jell? The old man shook his head to silence him, but he kept on speaking, I bet he got caught and taken in her place. Those bastards. I want to go home. One of the crying children yelled. What's all this racket in here? One of the cultists' voice boomed as he and another guard stormed the cell. Calm down Shu. A boy pleaded as he tried to comfort the child. It's okay Shu Kun, Gramps is here. The old man said trying to help as well. You better shut up you little whelp before I cut your tongue out. The guard yelled. He suddenly began choking and grasped his throat as blood ran down his chin from his mouth. Everyone saw the tip of a sword sticking out of the front of his throat as blood gushed from his neck before the blade was removed, letting the guard collapse to the ground dead. They all sat there stunned and not saying a word. What the hell was that? Another guard came down to the cell before his eyes suddenly rolled up into the back of his head as he collapsed. When his body hit the floor, the kids and old man could see three small daggers sticking out of his back. Well that's two down, though there's more to come. A voice echoed down the dungeon halls. They all turned to see the form of Naruto Uzumaki holding two swords in his hand, blood splashed over his clothing and blades. Footsteps were heard as a group of twenty cultists charged around the corner and came face to face with the scene. It's him the intruder. Kill him now. The man in front, most likely the captain, commanded. Naruto shook his head as he sent the two swords away before holding his hand forward. Idiots. A large magical circle seal came to life, lit up a bright gold inches from his hand. The slaves watched as the beginnings of swords appeared from the seal, until dozens of various swords stopped halfway of leaving the seal. The cultists began charging him, not taking too much notice or even caring about the entire pointy swords, ready to slice them to pieces. About twelve of them came at him to cut him off from the slaves, as the rest of the cultists marched forward to the cells, the leader of this group among them. With a flick of his wrist, Naruto called out his technique. Requip. Nyujin no Kensei. Infinite creation of swords, before the charging cultists could blink, swords upon swords burst from the large magical seal and slashed, pierced and gutted the black magic cultists. At the cells, the lead cultists held its spear at the group. One of you must be responsible somehow. No one should know about this island. No matter, he'll soon be dead and as example to all slaves some of you will die. Starting with you. He pointed the tip of his spear at Shu and started charging. Before he could make it though, Naruto appeared in front of him, his hand around his throat crushing the man's windpipe while he glared at the man. Attacking kids who can barely stand, huh? You must be so fucking proud of yourself. With a yell, he chucked the man down long hallway where he smashed into the wall the soon fell on him as it crumbled. The other cultists stared in fear at the brutal strength he showed. He turned to the slaves behind him who was looking at him in awe. Oi, you guys just gonna stand there or are you going to fight for your freedom? These guys are nothing but cowards. He yelled back at them while ducking a stab before landing a kick that sent an enemy flying. He didn't want to freak the kids out by getting stabbed and still fighting with a sword through him. It may make them think twice about him and cause them to freeze up. His words caused Urza's eyes to widen as she remembered what Jell had told her. We have to fight she repeated the words to herself. She gained a determined glint in her lone eye as she picked up one of the dropped weapons before charging forward and cutting through the re-aiming cultists in front of them. Naruto, in all of his years of seeing amazing things, couldn't stop himself from staring in awe as she proceeded to slice the remaining cultists to shreds. Where did that come from? She took out the other half by herself. He thought in amazement as Urza took down one more cultist before turning to her fellow slaves. We won't become free by following orders or running away. She shouted looking at each of her friends. We have to fight. Stand up for freedom. Inspired by her words the rest of the slaves stood up and armed themselves with what they could find. Naruto smiled at their determination and gave a nod. Follow me. I'll show you the way out. He shouted, running to and up the stairs he'd come down from. After arriving outside from the cells, Naruto and the slaves came face to face with an army of cultists hell-bent on crushing the revolt. You think you can rebel? Put them all down. The head of the cultists' army shouted to his men. Both sides charged at each other with battle cries as they began clashing swords in a massive clash with the slaves fighting tooth and nail for their freedom. You won't take advantage of us. Kill them all. Kill all the slaves. The cultists shouted. We have the numbers. We will have our freedom. All of the slaves returned the shout in unison. Naruto was at the head of the charge cutting down cultists left and right with brutal efficiency, summoning swords as he went along quicker than they could blink. A tendril of magic erupted from his body and formed a clone to aid in the battle, which didn't go unnoticed by the cultists. That guy, he's not one of the slaves. He's a mage. Call in the magicians to take him down. One of the cultists ordered. 
Naruto gritted his teeth at that. Shit. He shouted, turning to the small redhead, Urza. You seem to be the leader of these guys, stick to regular cultists I'll handle the magicians. He ordered. Wait. Urza pleaded looking up at him in worry. You can't do it alone. I can help you. She shouted, not wanting to lose her savior. Naruto grinned as he turned away to face the magicians. Don't worry I'm a fairy tale mage I can take it. When he turned, it gave Urza a good view of his fairy tale crest. Before she could say anything, he was already off jumping over the cultists in front of him and charging the incoming magicians. He's like Aji Isan a real fairy tale mage she thought stunned before she smiled and tightened her grip on the sword she held. You bastards think you can take illegal slaves and no one would find out about it. All to resurrect some stupid god. Sorry to say, but that doesn't sit well with me. He stopped just short of the group and held his hand out to the side, a seal appeared inches away from it. Requip. Sword of Tsukiyomi. His favorite sword appeared in his hand with a flash, and he grinned as he poured magical energy into it, with the result being wide energy pouring from it. With a mighty swing and a wide arc, he shouted out. Jinjetsu. Crescent moon, a white blast of energy fired from the blade in the instant of the slash which took on the form of a crescent. The blast of energy plowed through their ranks, leaving a huge trench in its wake, as the blast exploded in the form of wild energy, flinging magicians away like ragdolls. The magicians regrouped and began to rapidly fire blasts of magical energy from their staffs and hands. Naruto growled as he began to run at them, slashing the blasts of energy with the sword of Tsukiyomi in half. One of the magicians noticed he had directed their fire away from the rebels, taking the brunt of their attack by himself. Seizing the opportunity he jumped behind his fellow warriors, using them as cover and took aim at the rebels and fired a blast directly towards Urza. Urza? Old man Rob shouted as he dove in front of her to take the blast. He braced himself for the hit but was stunned to hear two blasts either side of him and Urza. He opened his eyes to see an Naruto stood in front of him with his sword held in front of him with smoking coming off it. Wow. Just when I thought you guys couldn't get any lower, you go and decide to attack a 12-year-old girl from behind. Naruto muttered, lowering his blade. You must be full of fucking courage, eh? He asked sarcastically with a sneer on his face. This boy incredible Rob uttered in awe. Now up close to the boy he got a good look at the fairy tale tattoo on his arm. Fairy tale, huh? Makarov, you sure got yourself one hell of a mage. What are you going to do now boy? There's no way you can keep this up. Just give up now and your death will be painless. One of the magicians declared. The cultists started to charge only to be halted in their tracks as a bunch of weapons rose into the air between the two forces. What is this? They yelled. Everyone turned to see Urza with her hands raised in the air and an angry expression on her face as a large magic seal lit up beneath her. I won't give up, we won't give up until everyone is free. She yelled as the weapons launched towards the magicians. They tried to flee unsuccessfully as the massive weapons cut them down to shreds. Awesome Nissan can use magic too. One of the kids with blonde hair shouted. With two magic users this good there's no way we can lose. Another declared. The remaining cultists stared at them in horror. Come with me. Urza yelled, lifting her sword into the air. Naruto smiled at the small girl and summoned two swords into his hand, moving into a stance as he did so. You heard her. This is your show. He yelled at the other slaves who roared a battle cry as they charged forward, following Urza. The cultists were now on their heels and soon overwhelmed by the slave revolt and Naruto's clones. As the rebels drove the cultists back, the deserters were ambushed by a group of Naruto clones, waiting for them at the docks. When the battle had started Naruto had set aside a group of clones to protect the young children who couldn't fight and lead them to a ship. Since each of the clones could use his magic they easily defeated their enemies with summoned swords. In the meantime, the kids and the clones had prepared the ship for the slaves to escape from the island. Now that the battle was over everyone began to move to the ship, excited that their freedom was finally secured. Hey, where's Urza? An older boy asked the collective group. She went to find Jell. Rob answered, sitting on a bench, his sore bones needing to rest. Nissan should have been back by now. A small girl stated with a frown. Shit, you guys go ahead and take off. I'll find Urza and catch up. Naruto ordered as he turned and ran back towards the tower. What's the rush? We can wait. The older boy from before called out. Naruto stopped in his place and jogged on the spot as he looked at them. I got orders to blow this place sky high. It wouldn't do any good for you guys to be around when that happened. Don't worry I'll make sure that she's safe. He told them before taking off leaving nothing but a breeze in his wake. Alright, then good luck. Rob yelled to the empty air, knowing somehow that Naruto knew. When Urza had arrived at Jell's location, she'd freed him from his restraints, but she had then noticed that something was off. He started spouting nonsense about how true freedom was right here and he wasn't leaving. 
He then used some strange magic to kill some cultists that had been beaten and were barely clinging to life. She had pleaded with him to run away with her and explained how all of their friends were waiting for him, but then he started ranted about Zeref and completing the tower. She thought he was acting strange because he was tortured and declared that they were leaving. He then turned on her. Jell had lifted his hand and released a blast of magic, sending her crashing through a wall and into a large cavern before she landed skidding along the ground. She rolled over onto her stomach groaning to look at her friend who'd gone mad. Go ahead, if you want to leave so much then go ahead on your own. However, the rest of your friends will stay here with me to finish this tower. I won't be like them ruling through force and fear. I will give them clothes, food, and the privilege of working for the great mage Zeref. He proclaimed with a crazed look about him. What are you talking about? Everyone is waiting for us, no one will come back to work here. Open your eyes Jell. she was silenced by Jell lifting up his hand and used his dark magic to choke her. I don't need you anymore. As a reward for getting rid of those nuisances I won't kill you. You can go and find your fleeting freedom he sneered at her, a look that didn't suit a 12 year old. Jell Al she gasped out, feebly grasping at her throat. I'll trust you not to speak of this to anyone, if the government were to find out about this tower of heaven plan, everything would be ruined. I would have to destroy the evidence of this tower and eliminate all the workers. You can never return here, if you do I'll start killing all your little friends. How about I start with Shu or even better that old man you're so fond of. Ha ha ha. He cackled with evil laughter as he tightened the grip on her throat. No, she gasped out with tears pouring from her eyes. That is your precious freedom. Live on with the lives of your Nakama resting on your back Urza. Ha 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 ha. Jello cackled with made glee only to be blindsided by a punch to the face that sent him flying into a wall. Not in this lifetime asshole. She's already free. A voice declared. Jello scrambled to his feet to see the sight of Naruto holding a crying Urza to his chest. His eyes were narrowed and slit as he glared at him. Who the hell are you? What are you doing here? Jello demanded. Me? I'm a fairy tale mage. What I'm doing? Starting a slave revolt, killing off cultists, destroying this tower, but for some reason since seeing this girl cry really seems to piss me off I'm going to be kicking your ass. Naruto answered as he moved to a section of the wall in the tunnel and placed Urza down. He gave her a small smile as she looked up at him. You stay here okay? I'm gonna take care of this guy and then make sure you get off this rock. She gave him a weak nod as Naruto stood up and began walking towards Jell. Magic energy erupted out of Naruto as he held his hand out, a seal appearing before it. Requip Rikin Jaka. With a flash and the vanishing of the seal, a new sword appeared in his hand resembling a standard katana with a dark purple handle and a circular hand guard. All of a sudden, the blade lit up with crimson fire, the sword's natural fire. The heat of it was so strong that the ground underneath it was actually melting away. Jello took cautious steps back from the sword. What the fuck is that? He uttered making Naruto grin. One of my many unique swords. It even comes with its own fire too. Naruto grinned before stabbing the sword into the ground and smirked darkly. Men Richter. Ultra Dragon Fang Flame, beneath Jell's feet, the ground began to shake and turn red. Before Jell could react, a tower of flame erupted from under him, smashing into him and dragging his body through every level of the tower as the Tower of Flame soared higher. Naruto pulled the sword out of the ground, cancelling the Tower of Fire, and sealed the sword away before turning back to Urza and jogging up to her as the building began to collapse behind him. As he leaned down to pick her up he found that she was still conscious. Thank you she whispered before passing out in his arms. He smiled before running back out the way he came in as the tower began to collapse behind him. As he reached the end of the tunnel leading out he took a giant leap from the edge of the tunnel all the way to the shore. The tower behind him collapsed into one big pile of rubble. He looked back at the remains before shrugging and carrying on. Hey man. Nice job. A voice rang out. Naruto looked over to the origin of the voice to see the old man in the boat with his dog who gave him a ride out here. Old man. Hey you know what happened to the others? He asked with a raised eyebrow, indicating to the empty space that once held a ship. They're fine, took the cultist ship and hightailed it to the nearest town. The old man explained. That's good. Naruto nodded with a smile before looking down at Urza. Hey can you take her to her friends? He asked the old man. The old man shook his head in response. That old guy you saved earlier, Rob, he's ex fairy tale. Gave up on magic years ago though, but that girl Urza, he said take her to fairy tale. It's her dream to be free and become a mage of fairy tale like he used to be. He explained. Naruto looked down at her, she's got real strength, don't worry I got it covered. Hey if he's fairy tale, he must have been responsible for the job showing up. That's why it vanished when I got here. Ah oh man that means there's no pay. He grumbled despite the fact he didn't really the need the money. He said to report everything back to old Makarov. This should have been a government sanctioned mission, so he'll take care getting you your pay. 
the old man explained, getting a grin from Naruto. Ghoul, well then, you mind giving me a ride back to land? Naruto asked the boatman. Not at all, hop on in, always nice to have some company eh, Rinko? The old man answered before grinning at his dog. Woof. Woof. Rinko barked in response. Naruto grinned as he hoped into the boat and sat on the side still holding Urza to his chest. Urza woke with a stir. As her eyes blinked open she found herself in a room lying in a comfortable bed, she almost thought she was dreaming, since the only thing she had laid down on in a long time was a cold, hard ground. Looking around, she saw the blonde mage who had saved her and her friends chatting with an old man. Makarov and the others noticed her as a now wake and sat up. Ah, finally awake young lady. Naruto has told me a lot of impressive things about you Urza chan Makarov greeted with a welcoming smile. Naruto? She questioned confused. Naruto chuckled and walked over to her. That's right, we weren't formally introduced. I'm Naruto Uzumaki, and this here is Fairy Tales Guildmaster, Makarov. Naruto introduced. Urza went wide-eyed and scrambled to her feet as her small hands gripping her dress as she bowed to them. I'm Urza Scarlet, thank you for saving me and my friends. She greeted and thanked Naruto. Naruto chuckled at her as he waved her off. No need to be so formal Urza-chan. From what you did back in that place, you're strong yourself. If it wasn't me who saved you, you probably would have beaten those guys even if I hadn't showed up. He grinned as Urza blushed at the praise of her savior. I got her on, got more jobs that need doing. The old man here will show you the ropes here. See you around. Naruto said as he walked out the room. Naruto shut the door behind him before walking out into the main hall. He quickly reached the main guild entrance, and after he'd taken a few steps outside the sound of rapid footsteps halted him as he turned back. There she was, Urza Scarlet running up to him with tears in her eyes. Wait. Take me with you. We can become strong together. After Jell I don't want to lose another friend. She pleaded as she ran up to him. Naruto smiled lightly at her in understanding. Bending down to be her Heidi patted her head. Hey, you're not losing me. Old man Rob said that your dream was to be a fairy tale mage right? So, it wouldn't be fair to you to drag you around with me while I finish my training and go on dangerous jobs. This place is awesome so you'll make tons of friends don't worry. I'll stop in often when I'm in between jobs, so you will see me a lot too, and eventually I'll be back here for good. He said trying to reassure her. With a smile, he reached under his shirt and removed Tsunade's necklace and placed it around Urza's neck. Someone once gave this to me to show their hope and faith in me. That person means more to me than my own life. Now you can believe in me too. He proclaimed before giving her a kiss on the forehead. Urza stood there stunned with a huge blush on her face, as Naruto walked away waving back at her over his shoulder. Suddenly Marahin ran to the doors. Oh I. Where the hell do you think you're going? I never even got to kick your ass. She shouted with gritted teeth as Naruto ignored her. She then noticed Urza staring off into the distance at her nemesis with a dreamy smile on her face while gripping her new necklace tightly. What the hell are you looking at? Marahin sneered at the redhead. Urza snapped her head to the white-haired girl her own size and instinctively glared. None of your business. Urza snapped. Lightning bolts appeared between their eyes before they each turned away from one another with a HMPH. Flashback end. You were so cute back then as a little kid. Naruto grinned as he walked over to Urza who was blushing at his comment. As Naruto walked towards her, he took notice of the many demons and creatures lying dead around them. So, you got all your own demons then? He asked, stopping in front of her, now taking notice of the large horn beside her. I take that as a yes. He muttered with a chuckle. Urza smiled at him as she patted the horn. Thank you for helping me, despite the job request only being a B-class. She thanked him. Naruto shrugged with a grin. I was bored, besides, I wouldn't want to be any other place. You're more pleasant company than Natsu or Grey anyway. He said with a shrug and the same grin. Urza raised an eyebrow at that though her lip twitched upwards to a smile. Well then, would you like to accompany me at the village inn for the night? It's getting dark and I don't have to head back to the guild until tomorrow. And you're following Natsu to Harjan Town, I'd like one more night if it's not too much trouble. She asked with a small grin and a little tilt to her head. Naruto gave her a small smile and grasped the horn beside her. I'd love to. With his great strength, he picked the horn up and slung over his shoulder as they began to walk away. As they did walk off though, Urza glanced at the taller man beside her with a smile and touched his arm getting a strange look from him before her hand slid down his arm until she grasped his hand, intertwining their fingers together. Naruto smiled warmly at her while squeezing her hand. You know, it's okay to act like a woman every now and again instead of a warrior. Seeing the strange look from the slightly blushing woman, he shrugged slightly. We're mages, in this line of work people who aren't like me don't always have a long life ahead of them. You should make every moment last and have fun. 
Urza smiled at him understanding the hidden meaning behind what he had said and gripped his hand tighter, moving closer to him, so her arm was nearly hooked around his. How about I promise I won't be as strict then? Just for you. She asked with a small smile before turning deadly serious. Except for Natsu and Grey however. She stated clearly. Naruto also turned serious and gave a nod. Except for Natsu and Grey. He looked at her with a grin. Though you and Mirachan were just as bad one day. Urza blushed in memory of that and elbowed him in the side getting a grunt from him. That was a long time ago. She muttered as they entered the forest leading to the closest village. She tugged his hand harder forward, wanting to get a nice shower and clean herself of demon blood. Hurry up, I want a nice long shower she grew an impish grin, something no one had seen in fairy tale. That is, if you'll join me. She winked at him. Naruto just growled playfully, and before Urza could react, he had picked her up, horns still on shoulder, and vanished in the blink of an eye. Backroad village. Fairy tale guild. Basement. Urza groaned as she rolled her hips on top of Naruto, who was now fully sheathed within her on top of a crate. She grabbed the back of his head and pulled him into a deep and hungry kiss as she began to slowly bounce on top of him, feeling him slide in and out of her, filling her to the brim. Ugh, I missed this, missed you. Going on ugh jobs without you mhmm aren't the same she trailed off as she twisted gyrated her hips in such a way his shaft managed to hit a certain spot, leaving her unable to talk for a moment. Anymore. Naruto gasped as she planted another hungry kiss on his lips, and all he could do was hold her fit hips as they began to bounce on top of him, growing into a more frenzied pace. As she broke the kiss to gasp, he finally found his voice. Urza, not that I don't unmind this side of you, hell, it turns me on ugh, but what's the occasion? He asked as his right hand drifted to her large breasts, his mind telling him to just go with it, he wasn't going to argue when his lover was currently bouncing on top of him, grunting and moaning every time he filled her. Before Urza could answer though, they heard a squeak on the other side of the basement, where they kept food. Urza. Naruto. All movement still as they turned horrified eyes onto each other. As one, they turned their heads to the noise to see the familiar blue cat, happy with a fish hanging out of its mouth, never mind the impossibly wide-eyed stare it had. Before either could do anything, wings sprouted from Happy's back, and he shot off to the stairs. Shit. Naruto exclaimed, somehow lifting a frozen Urza off of him a pop as his shaft left her tight lips. Naruto utilizing his great speed, managed to pull his Hakama back on as Urza, in her frozen state, managed to requip her armor. Naruto grabbed Urza's hand and getting a nod from her, they sped up the basement stairs and into the main hall, to which their eyes went wide at as soon as they entered. Seated at one table were Marahin, Natsu, Grey, Elfman, Kana, Levi and Happy floating above them. As soon as they had stepped onto the landing, they had taken notice that the group had already been staring at the basement entrance with shocked expressions, even the usually dense Natsu. However, to Urza's growing horror, Happy pointed at them with his wide-eyed look. I told you. Urza, going into kill mode summoned a sword without hesitation and was about to kill the cat when Naruto's had snapped onto her, grasping it enough to stop her from killing the feline. Naruto smiled at the confused look she gave him and shrugged. It was bound to get out sooner or later, and to be honest sneaking around is getting troublesome. As soon as the last word left his mouth he palmed his own face whilst muttering. All these years and I'm still emulating Shikamaru, damn. Shaking his head to focus on what was important now. Urza continued to stare for a moment before letting out Urza's ein sigh, whilst giving Naruto an accused look. This is your fault. If you had stopped me, we wouldn't have gotten into this mess. She commented with a sigh, though she avoided his eyes as she blushed slightly. Naruto blinked at his lover. My fault. Stop you. I was barely able to blink before you'd grab my jacket and whisk me away to the basement. He exclaimed, waving his hands about in exasperation. Urza flushed at that and attempted to speak, but all she could do was open and close her mouth wordlessly before looking at the group and lowering her head in embarrassment at their still, wide-eyed stares. She was supposed to be the strict one, full of confidence, and yet here she was bowing her head like a kicked puppy. Naruto sighed and grasped her hand, leaning down to her ear. Urza, relax, this are friends. One way or the other they were going to find out. They won't think differently of you or treat you any differently if that's what you're worried about. He pulled back with a smile while she simply stared at him, letting him drag her to their gaping friends. Whatever happens or is said here today doesn't leave the group of us or I will show you why I'm considered an S-class mage. All of them gulped nervously before Naruto began speaking with. Well, we've been together for seven months now, just after Urza turned 19. To be continued in Chapter 3. Lucy Hurtfilia. Chapter 3. Lucy Hurtfilia. Kingdom of Fiori. Backroad Village. Sleep and eat in. The next morning. The beep the beep beep. Ugh Naruto slowly cracked an eye open as the alarm on the nightstand started buzzing louder. 
grunting, he pulled his arm out from underneath the bed sheets, reached over and smacked the top of the clock none too lightly, and smashing it to pieces. Shrugging mentally, he told himself that they would be gone before anyone noticed. And if they did, he would use the line, we're fairy tale, what do you expect? Since that always seemed to shut people up. Yawning now, he brought the hand back and briefly rubbed it over his eyes and forehead. Noticing the room was in fact glowing from the sunlight, he blinked rapidly, adjusting to the brightness after just waking up. As his eyes adjusted to the light, he mentally went over his plans that he had thought of the day before. First, get up obviously and get dressed, secondly, go check on Natsu on his little recon mission in Harjan town and pick something up from that town, but before all of that, he had to kiss his girlfriend goodbye for a short while. And speaking of girlfriend. Feeling a weight pressing up against his side and breathing on his arm, he shifted his head to his left, where he glimpsed at a contented face with a head of dark red hair resting against his bare arm. Urza's left arm began to slowly snake its way across his chest, above his own left hand and arm, eventually coming to a rest as it draped completely across him from underneath the sheets. Her right hand though, grasped his left arm and hugged it between her bare breasts. Looking at her face, made him smile just from seeing such a peaceful look on her usually stern face. Reaching up with his right hand, he brushed her hair behind her ear softly and leant forward to kiss the top of head, sighing in content. When he had first heard he was leaving Kanoha for good, he had been nervous, panicked and absolutely scared shitless. Kanoha had been his home all of his life, he grew up there, knew everything there was to know. But starting a new life in some other world scared him at the newness of everything. He had followed Tsunade OK Sen's advice by being himself, no more masks, and it had earned him respect from all kinds of people. They liked him now, never judged him, and most of the people in this new world were all kind. Except those in the dark guilds obviously. But if he had to ever choose between fairy tale and Kanoha, then Kanoha would definitely be the loser. He may have some loved ones there and he would miss them, but fairy tale was his true home, as well as the world itself. In his traveling he had even met many mages of all kinds, learned different kinds of magic, and simply explored the world where anything was possible. Obviously he had trained to improve what he could already do, adding more techniques to his repertoire. But from meeting those new people he had made friends, earned experiences of all kinds, and simply had fun. Shaking his head of thinking about the past and what he'd done, he smiled down at the woman he loved. Urza. Urza he drawled, just in case she wasn't awake yet, but he had a feeling the alarm had woken her up as well. It usually did whenever they slept at the same place together which was most of the time, or in this case an inn which they always shared, then again, Urza had been very excited the night before, or it could be called the early hours in the morning, so she could still be exhausted. He was cut off from the thoughts of their love-making marathon the night before, as he felt her shift against him, murmuring something against his arm, but it was nothing that he could understand even with his enhanced hearing. Hmm. I couldn't hear what you said. He murmured to her, leaning down so she could hear him. He could see as Urza shifted slightly, the sheet moving down along her arm to expose her bare shoulder and the side of her large breast, almost causing his breath to hitch at the perfect smooth skin. Naruto felt her breath against his skin as she inhaled deeply, then spoke up again, clearer this time. Just Naruto couldn't stop the small chuckle that escaped his lips as Urza yawned cutely in the middle of starting to talk. Just five more minutes. She urged, pressing herself deeper into Naruto, if that was possible. The last time you told me five minutes, I agreed and gotten ranted at and physically attacked. So, for once I'm being logical and he stopped abruptly as she shifted, lifting her left leg to rest on top of his, pressing her naked body against him, her wet center rubbed along his leg, as her knee managed to bump against a certain something that made her giggle. Oh, you're awake, huh? She purred, rubbing up against his leg, last night actions, and the squishy feel of his comb still being inside her making her aroused, it didn't matter she was barely awake, such a bad boy, Naruto-kun. Naruto grunted, trying not to be suckered in like last time. I have a beautiful woman lying naked beside me, curled up against me in fact, and rubbing all her good bits against me. If I wasn't awake I'd be afraid of what that would mean. He closed his eyes as she bit his shoulder playfully. Who would have thought Urza Titania Scarlet was in fact a hormonal driven woman, especially when everyone only sees the stern Urza. MMM, it feels good to know I affect you in such a way. She murmured into his shoulder, kissing it softly. Her arm slowly worked its way back across his chest, only for her hand to stop in the middle, then slowly start moving down to his abdomen, her finger tracing patterns as it went. Naruto groaned as he felt her closer. Hers in it that I'd be complaining normally, but you did warn me last night that you wanted to leave early today to get back to the guild. I also need to go see Natsuo. In the worst possible timing ever, Urza had ignored him, continuing to snake her hand down past his waist, until finally finding her object of desire and grabbing him and squeezed. Urza looked up at him with a raised eyebrow, despite just having woken up. 
I hope that was just the timing and you weren't moaning Natsu. She gave him a tug and a smirk to let him know she held power over him. You're meant to moan, scream and shout my name out. She smiled down at him, but it turned to a smirk. Although, I may not be the only person whose name you moan. She giggled at his look. W what? He asked confused as she continued to stroke him, pleasantly. Warahin has had feelings for you for a while, she's had a crush on you since she was young, but since she grew older like Methus feelings grew into something greater. She grinned slightly. She loves you. She, kissing his shoulder once more. Naruto looked down at her confused. Why are you telling me this? Is this a test? He asked, thinking that was the only possible reason. No idiot. She shook her head, smiling up at him. We both love you, very much, and after she and the others found out about us, she admitted to me that she loved you, I think she was going to challenge me for your love or something. She laughed lightly whilst Naruto looked at her inquisitively. I told her that I thought she had feelings for you, but I never knew she loved you. I promised her I would speak to you about it, I know you felt something for her beside me, and believe it or not, I'm okay with that. Ever since we've been together, you fill me with this confidence that makes me unafraid or self-conscious. I want us all to be happy, and if that means I have to share you with Marahin of all people, then so be it. She leant up and gave him a loving kiss. When we get back to the guild, I'm going to speak to her and let her know how I feel, and then it's all up to you. I want you to know, from the bottom of my heart, that I love you and if you want Marahin to join us, well she paused and gave him a tug getting a groan. I think it'll make things more interesting. At this point, his hormones were almost conquering a major part of his brain, beating his logical side away of what would happen if she was late to leave at the time she wanted to, never mind the images of a threesome with Marahin, Urza and himself now floating through his brain. However, feeling her surprisingly soft hand wrapped his shaft and pumping him just how she knew he liked it, he knew where this was going. That didn't mean he wasn't going to try to fight it. Urza, if you don't stop now, you're going to be late going back to the guild, and it takes a couple days to walk it. He tried to reason. Era. Magic Council. The Magic Council were the ruling body of the world of magic. The council oversaw guilds and kept them in check, and they were responsible for the events caused by mages. For this reason, they do not hold the fairy tale guild, mainly Natsu Dragneel and a certain someone in high regard, despite grudging respect for their power. The aforementioned group was currently in session, stood on a glowing magic circle that spun around slowly, yet no one was moved, within a large beautiful white palace. The identities of most of the figures were hidden by the shadows, due to not much lighting in the room, and most likely some form of magic, keeping the shadows on their faces and clothing. One of the members was a pale-skinned woman with long black hair, along with black eyes, wearing a short white dress that pronounced her voluptuous figure. To the annoyance of some of the council members, she was rolling a crystal ball in her arms back and forth with a serene smile, as if she didn't see the twitches of eyebrows on their faces. Ultier, stop behaving like a child barked one of the silhouettes from the opposite side of the circle. Deciding to piss them off more for the hell of it, the black-haired woman dropped the ball onto the magic circle, showing it was solid as the orb shattered into several pieces, to the further irritation of those seated at the table. With the same serene smile, she waved her hand and the glass reformed itself into a ball and levitated back into her hands. A smirk adorned her face as she surveyed the rest of the room and council mages. It is way too boring here, don't you agree Seagrain Sama? She questioned looking at the person stood two places from her. You're right, I wish someone caused some disaster. Seagrain said, a man whose most prominent features were his blue hair and strange marking tattoo across his right eye. He was dressed in elegant robes, in a white jacket and pants with thick black trim. He smirked as he looked around the other members. Close your trap you foolish boy. One of the male council members shouted. He was an older fellow sporting a ponytail with a white suit and a green cape. I have no idea how runs like you ever became council members. He exclaimed, face red in anger with a touch of arrogance. Seaglane waved off the old man's comments dismissively with a smirk. Because our magical power is high he stated with a smirk as Altier held a hand over her mouth to hide her giggles at the growing ire of the old mages. Old fossil. The large figure, most likely the leader or head mage, released a burst of his magical energy gaining their attention. Silence the both of you imbeciles. Like most of them the shadows covered his body in such a way that his appearance continued to remain hidden. The magical side of the world has many troubles ahead of them, but there is one thing we must all focus on what are we going to do about fairy tale. Those fools have been a thorn in our side for far too long. The council nodded and murmured in agreement with his statement. Let's not forget that man, ever since he joined fairy tale that place has gotten even more out of hand and a nuisance. A council member reminded them. Many scowls fitted the council members' faces except for Seagrain and Altier who smirked. Oh please. You guys are just pissed he's probably the strongest of their guild, not to mention S-class. Seagrain snorted whilst rolling his eyes. 
Ultier smiled serenely at that. Maybe we should have him join us, having him would make things a bit more fun. She smirked slightly. Master Hades has had his eye on Naruto-kun for a while now she thought absentmindedly. There were some gasps from the older members of the council at the very idea of having him be a member. Don't be foolish. Granting someone like him such power is blasphemy. One of the fairy tale haters shouted with vehemence. Once more the council descended into chaos all because of fairy tale and Naruto Uzumaki. Harjant Town. Brain Station. Natsu Dragneel, dragon slayer and member of Fairy Tale, groaned from where he was currently sat against the inside of the train carriage. Natsu was of average height, a lean-built person with tan skin, black eyes, and spiky rose-colored hair that was spiked up in all directions, similar to Naruto's hair only spikier and more hair atop his head. He wore a scarf that was detailed with white scales that was given to him by his adoptive father, Igneel. His outfit mainly consisted of a black waistcoat with gold trimmings over his chest with no shirt underneath, short white trousers that went down to his knees, a wide black wristband on his left wrist and sandals, along with his trademark scarf. What was unusual however was the red jacket he currently wore that covered his arms. Um, sir, are you alright? The train conductor asked Natsu who was currently sweating heavily whilst holding his stomach to stop from throwing up due to traveling. Ugh Natsu groaned, tilting his head to the side. I. Happy, his blue flying cat, said with an overly cheerful voice considering the scene. This happens all the time. He said with a little wave of its paw. Impossible. Natsu wheezed out as he clambered to the window above him. I will never ride a train, ever again he paused as his cheeks bulged, feeling sick just from the thought of a train, and quickly leaned out the window. Happy though was looking away with wide excited eyes. If the info we got is correct, Salamander should be in this town. Let's go. He pumped his paw and began walking off the train, unaware of Natsu's condition. Well, let me rest for a little while. Natsu begged, wheezing. Okay. Happy said, now looking up at him from outside the train. Natsu looked down at the blue cat in shock and horror as the train began to pull away. A hit departed already. Happy mumbled as Natsu screamed from the now moving train. Magic shop. Elsewhere in Magnolia Town, inside a magic shop was a young beautiful woman with brown eyes and blonde hair that was tied by a blue-colored ribbon in a singular bunch to the right side of her head. She had large breasts and a curvaceous body. She was currently wearing a white sleeveless top with blue stripes and very short skirt that just passed her hips. However, she also had a belt that, along with keeping her skirt up, held keys of gold and silver on the right, along with a whip of sorts on her left side with a love heart-shaped end. She also wears some sort of high heels. This was Lucy Hertfilia, a celestial spirit mage. The HHHH. Lucy exclaimed, leaning over the counter and looking at the shop clerk with disbelief. There's only one magic store in this town. And this is all you have? She asked with a face of displeasure. The shop clerk scratched the back of his head, nervous at the blonde's look. Yes this town is more prosperous in fishing that magic to begin with. He answered. Only less than 10% of the townsmen can use magic, so this store is mainly targeting traveling mages. Lucy sighed at that. I think I've wasted my time. She said dejectedly. The shop clerk waved his hands in a sort of panic before clasping them and looking at Lucy with a smile. Please don't say that and have a look around. We have some new items, too. He practically pleaded. From under the counter, he pulled out a rectangular object with a glowing light on it. This color's magic is probably the most probably the most familiar one among girls. Depending on your daily mood he pressed a button on it and his blue clothes became dark red. You can change the color of your outfit. I already have it. Lucy cut him off whilst picking a tube of sorts up. With a shrug, she put it down and began to look around with her hands clasped behind her back. I'm looking for the keys of the celestial gates. Strong ones. She informed him. Gates, huh? That's something uncommon. The clerk replied, digging into a spot under the counter. Ha. He crowed in victory before placing a small display case, which held a key placed on some sort of cushion, on the counter surface. White doggy. He proclaimed as Lucy looked down at the silver key. That's not strong at all. She mumbled to herself before perking up with a large smile. It's okay. I've been looking for it. She clasped her hands together in glee at hopefully having the key soon. How much is it? She asked with a sparkling eye. 20,000 jewels. The shopkeep answered with a greedy gleam. Lucy twitched at that before putting on a seductive smile. I wonder how much it is. She said with a suggestive look. He wasn't buying it at all. I said 20,000 jewels. He answered with a raised eyebrow. Deciding she had two up the level, she leaned forward over the counter, pressed her arms against her well-endowed breasts, and squeezed them making them more pronounced in her slightly unzipped top, whilst also fluttering her eyelids and biting her lip innocently. I wonder how much it really is, hmm, mister? 
she asked again, squeezing her breasts for added measure. Come on, fall for my sex appeal. She pleaded in her mind. The shop clerk just tilted his head, apparently unfazed by the Marge bust being pressed together and threatening to pop out of the unzipped top. 19,000 jewels. He answered eventually causing Lucy to narrow her eyes. That's it. My sex appeal is worth a 1,000 jewels. She twitched at that as she pulled back just in time for the door to open startling her slightly. Turning around to see the newcomer, her heart almost stopped as her breathing hitched. Walking into the shop was none other than Naruto Uzumaki, dressed in his usual attire with a small grin on his face. Oh my god. She squealed internally, fangirlish tendencies threatening to pop out. It's Naruto Uzumaki, the immortal, though I'm not sure why they call him that but either way, he's one of the strongest mages in fairy tale not to mention he's hot. Screw hot, he looks like a freaking Adonis oh crap he's coming this way. She suddenly went almost still at the realization she was in the same room as such a famous man. As Naruto walked further into the shop he almost did a double take at seeing the blonde young woman stood there looking at him in a daze. Is that Layla? No, she looks too young but the resemblance is remarkable. I wonder if she's Layla's his trail of thought ended as he reached the counter and slammed his hands down on it with a grin. Oi. Old man. You have what I ordered. He asked the clerk. Why yes the clerk stuttered in front of the taller, bigger and much stronger imposing man. I I'll just g go get it. With that said, he almost ran to the back. Meanwhile, Naruto was discreetly checking out the younger woman's appearance with a critical eye, more precisely the gold and silver keys dangling from her belt and the one on the counter. So, you're a celestial spirit mage, huh? He asked, snapping her out of her stupor, but not making her eyes any less wide. Lucy gulped at the taller man, whether it was out of awe, fear of her teenage hormones, making her feel and think many things she didn't know, but the most important fact Wash had spoken to her. Why yeah, um, I I've been see collecting the other Keiki Suzumaki sama She bowed out of simple courtesy since he was such a famous person, though she found it a little awkward, especially when he looked at her in amusement. Please, just call me Naruto. Naruto said with a grin, still in slight awe at the remarkable and practically identical appearance to Layla. Normally I'd use my henshin mom, transformation magic, to hide my appearance in towns like these to hide who I really am, I never realized just how famous I became. He said, mostly to himself and not noticing Lucy's deadpan expression at the last bit. Anyway, good luck on finding the rest of the keys, it's quite a challenge you've got ahead of you. Lucy nodded still in a bit of a trance. Why yeah, um. Yuzu I mean Naruto-san, why you're a member of fairy. Here we go. Lucy was cut off from her potential question and almost getting her dream as the shop clerk appeared with a long box. Placing it on the counter, the clerk ignored Lucy's glare for his interruption and went on untying the box to open it, revealing a beautiful sword. It looked like a normal katana with the exception of the guard, which was in the shape of an eight-pointed bronze-colored star. Its hilt was light blue and sheath dark blue with a crescent-shaped blade attached to its hilt by a long metal chain, I don't know why you asked for this, since you already have so many Naruto-sama. The shopkeeper shook his head. Naruto chuckled and smiled at Lucy for the interruption, knowing somewhat where she was going, since he was stood in such a position that she could see his fairy tail insignia on his arm. With a look of hunger that usually only appeared when it involved food, Urza and obviously swords that he had begun to love ever since learning how to use Requip. It's not the amount of swords you have old man. Each sword always has some meaning, a history behind them, and each one always has a special place in a person's heart for various reasons. I may have many swords at my disposal, but each one has a special place in my heart, either from how I got it, or if it was a gift from someone special to me, to someone who has such a fascination with swords, you could say they are a part of our soul. He smiled as he picked the one in the box up with careful hands, making sure to not damage it. I'm sure this one will be just like the authors and find some place in my heart. Lucy's eyes turned to hearts, and her heart began to beat fast at such a passionate speech, and all about swords. But in a way, the way he spoke about them with such passion sounded like how she would talk about her keys. It didn't help that hearing such a speech from such a handsome man, since it only made her practically drool at him. You said it was created just how I wanted. Does that include all of its special abilities? Naruto asked the clerk. Yes, everything you wanted, it has. The clerk said with a nod. Good. Naruto nodded, looking down at the sword in his hands. Another special sword, just like Rikyun Jaka. Hmm, considering what you can do, if what I actually wanted is in fact what you can now do, I think I should call you Himran Maru he declared to himself. With this, I now have four powerful and unique sword, Tsukiyomi, Rikyun Jaka, Himran Maru and my final once in Bonsakura with a grin, a magical circle flashed to life around the sword and both blinked out of existence a moment later with a flash. Thanks old man, it'll come in handy later on. He put his hand into his pocket and pulled out a large roll of money. 
Here you go, thank whoever made this for me. He chucked a large roll at the clerk who went wide-eyed at such an amount. Turning around, he began to walk away with Lucy's eyes following him still in awe of him. Oh, by the way Naruto looked over at the clerk. That key on the counter put it on my tab. With a small wave, he left. Lucy stared after him with a confused look before looking at the clerk who was practically stroking the many notes of money. Um, about the key she trailed unsure whether or not Naruto was being serious. Yes, yes, he paid for it, just take it. The shop clerk waved his hand at her dismissively, too engrossed in counting his money. Yay. Lucy cheered, pumping her fist with a grin as she quickly grasped the key before he changed his mind. Yuzu no, I mean Naruto-san must have noticed my sex appeal she thought with a grin before practically skipping to the door. Hmm, I should go find him to thank him and hopefully get a meal out of him. She grinned, thinking up a plan as she left the shop quickly and began looking around in hopes of finding Naruto, but she couldn't even see any blonde hair. Damn, where the hell did he go? She muttered to herself as she began walking along the street. I mean, how could a tall hot guy, dressed in white with bright blonde and bright blue blue eyes suddenly vanish? She chose to ignore the weird stares she received as she carried on mumbling to herself about hot blondes. hi -ah. Lucy jumped, startled at the sudden squeal, and looked down at a separate street where she could see several young women, just older than her squealing and running to a crowd of women. The famous mage Sama is in town. A young woman shouted running past Lucy, freaking her out as she had to dodge more women from running into her. But Salamander Sama. Another squealed in pure joy, showing their fangirlish tendencies. Lucy frowned as she watched them go with a perplexed look. Salamander. She asked thin air, before turning fangirlish herself. Why you mean the mage who controls the magic of fire that can't be bought in stores? He's in town. She squealed, clapping her hands together. Cool, he's popular. I wonder if he looks cool. He murmured to herself with a grin before jogging up to the squealing commotion down the street. The street close by. I ended up riding the train twice. Natsu grumbled, in a slouch walking along the street with Happy walking beside him with a smile. You're so bad with transportation. Happy chirped with a grin before he grabbed his small stomach. And I'm hungry don't have any money. He whined, pitifully. Natsu ignored that though and focused on their goal. Hey, Happy, they probably meant Igneal when they said Salamander, right? He asked a tad hopeful though he was still moping from having to experience two train journeys. Yup. Happy nodded with a grin. I can only think of Igneal when I hear Dragon of Fire that's what I thought too. He agreed with wide eyes of innocence. Natsu cheered as he pump zero at both fists into the air. I finally found him. I feel a little better now. He grinned. I. Happy agreed as they came upon the scene of a crowd of women squealing Salamander Sama. See. Speak of the devil. Natsu shouted with a wide grin. I. Happy exclaimed as they began running to the commotion. At the same time, Lucy was staring at the reason of so many squeals and love-struck women. Wah she stammered staring at the man in front of her with eyes and a hand to her heart. The man, Salamander, was a relatively tall man with blue hair and black eyes. He wore a purple cape with a gold trim and lavender designs. His shirt was white with a magenta trimming, and his pants were maroon. He had a tattoo above his right eye. Why is my heart beating so fast? She thought in a trance. W wait. What happened to me? She asked herself in confusion, unable to look away. Ha, ah, ha, ah, I'm had. Salamander said with a small smile. I can't walk like this. He turned to look in Lucy's direction with a charming smile. Lucy gulped as he looked over at her and pulled both hands against her breasts to calm her beating heart and cool down. Is it because he's a famous mage? Is that why my heart is beating so fast? She questioned herself, a cold sweat running down her face, as she tried to come to grips with what was happening to her. Igneal. A shout echoed through the crowd. Igneal. Lucy though ignored the shout and reached a hand out, still in a trance. Imabe she stopped in her tracks though as a rose-haired colored teen pushed through the crows of woman and dropped to the floor with a large smile. Huh? She questioned wondering why the sudden feelings vanished. Igneal. Natsu shouted, but paused as he looked at the man with a tilt of his head after getting a good look at him. Who are you? Natsu asked with a look of confusion. Salamander looked taken aback for a moment before putting his charming smile on and cupping his chin with a hand to perform a pose. Maybe you know me as, Salamander. However he realized something was wrong as he looked at where Natsu once stood. Snapping his head down the street, he went bug-eyed as he saw Natsu and his cat companion walking off without a care in the world. Gone already. He shouted in shock. Meanwhile, Lucy was looking at Salamander with suspicion now she found herself capable of rationalized thoughts. What was that? If I became like that when I saw him because he was famous, wouldn't the same have happened with Naruto-san? She asked herself in confusion. 
Before Natsu could make it away, he found himself on the ground with woman beating him and yelling. Hey, you are rude. She's right. Salamander-sama is a great mage. Apologize to him. All the time Natsu lay on the ground, shocked as hell. What the hell is this? He thought as he felt himself get pummeled by these crazy women. Oh my god is this what Urza does to Naruto. He thought in more horror, too innocent for his own good. That's enough girls. Salamander called out, placating the women in an instant. He didn't really mean it, either. He said walking over to the downed Natsu as the teen began to pick himself off the ground. You're so kind. The women swooned whilst Lucy narrowed her eyes at the women's love-stricken looks and adoration for Salamander. Hukuku. Salamander snickered to himself as he wrote on a piece of paper. I'll give you my signature. You can show it off to your friends. He said holding it out to Naruto whilst the women around them made sounds of awe and jealousy. Natsu frowned at that and just looked at him with a deadpan expression. I don't want it. He stated. The statement though rewarded him with a kick to the face from a random woman sending him sprawling down the street. What did I do to deserve this? Natsu whined mentally. What are you? That lost. The women shouted as Happy Hop Natsu sighed with a small frown. It wasn't him. He said with a sad tone. Salamander ignored Natsu and turned to his faithful women with a charming smile. Thank you for your enthusiastic welcome, but I have some errands to run at the port, so please excuse me. He held his hand out and a flicker of purple flames came to life. Red carpet. Salamander exclaimed as his fire turned into the shape of a flexible purple carpet, with a short jump he landed on the tip of the flame as it rose up, so he looked down on everyone. I'm having a part tonight on my ship. Please come. He called out as his fire whisked him away causing hearts to appear in the women's eyes at the display. Of course. Salamander Sama. What is he? Natsu grumbled from where he sat on the ground with a disgruntled look. He is really disgusting. Natsu looked back to see Lucy stood behind him with a scowl in Salamander's direction. That scowl though turned to a big smile as she looked down at Natsu and Happy. Thanks for earlier. She grinned, giving him a little wave. Huh? Natsu asked with a raised eyebrow and perplexed look. Let me buy you some lunch. Lucy exclaimed with a grin making Natsu and Happy's eyes to widen at the offer which they nodded vigorously to with hungry looks and drool leaving their mouths. With another grin, Lucy grabbed Natsu and Happy and began pulling them along. On a rooftop nearby, Naruto smiled down at the scene with amusement. Well isn't this interesting, you're just like your mother his eyes locked onto Lucy's back as she dragged the two away. Lucy hurt Philia. He frowned suddenly as his mind wandered. If you're here Lucy, then where is your mother? With a shrug, he leapt down from the building, deciding to interrupt their meal. The sooner this fake salamander is sorted out, the sooner we can get back to the guild. Restaurant. Lucy stared in awe disgust as Natsu shoved food down his throat like she'd never seen before. E her anes burn. You're a nice person, Natsu said through mouthfuls of food and drink. E hip, e hip. Happy agreed, hugging a fist to his small body while chewing on it. Lucy waved her hands in front of her, whether to calm him down or knock bits of food away, was anyone's guess. Aha, hey you are Natsu and happy, right? She asked with beads of sweat rolling down her face, embarrassed slightly. I understand you, so just eat slowly. She almost pleaded. Or things will keep splashing all over the place she sighed as Natsu barely slowed down. That salamander guy was using magic called charm. It's a magic that attracts other people's hearts to the caster and was already banned several years, but trying to get girls' attention by using such magic how disgusting. Lucy shook her head at the pitiful mage. She beamed at the two in front of her though. Though, thanks to you guys jumping in, charm on me more off. She thanked. I see. Natsu mumbled biting into a large chicken leg. I may look like this, but I'm a mage too. Lucy proclaimed proudly. Ooh. Natsu murmured between drinking. I'm not a member of any guild yet, though. She said with a sheepish laugh before blinking, believing Natsu didn't know what a guild was. Ah, a guild is an association for mage, and it will mandate jobs and information to mages. Mages won't be considered full-fledged until they work for a guild. She frowned for a moment before breaking out into a large smile. But. But. There are many guilds all over the world, and it's pretty hard to get into the guilds that are popular. She clasped her hands and gained a dreamy smile. Many great mages will gather at the one I want to get into. Ah, what should I do? I want to get in, but I bet it'll be hard. She sighed dejectedly. She perked though, feeling hope in her chest. But I'll surely join the guild. I bet I can get many big jobs there. She said with a smile. Fairy tale same place Naruto-san is from. Do see Natsu mumbled with his mouth full of food. You talk a lot. Happy stated blunt as always. Lucy rolled her eyes and crossed her legs under the table. By the way, aren't you guys looking for someone? She asked them with a raised eyebrow. I. Happy nodded with a smile. It's Igneal. 
Lucy raised an eyebrow at that and tilted her in confusion. I heard that Salamander is coming to this, so we came, but it was the wrong person. Natsu explained with a sigh, biting into a bread roll. This salamander didn't look like a salamander. Happy carried on. I totally believed it was Igneal, too. Natsu grumbled. How cold a human look like a salamander? Lucy asked with a perplexed look on her face. HRMM? He's not a human. Natsu said with a cheek full of bread. Igneal is a real dragon. Lucy screeched with a gaping mouth and wide eyes, curling up on herself comically. There's no way such a thing would be in this town. She screeched at the duo that suddenly went wide-eyed and pointed a finger at her, as if to say she made a good point. Hey. Don't tell me you only just noticed. She exclaimed in disbelief, her eyes bugging out at the guy in front of her. Ha, ha. All three turned at the laugh to see another person sitting in the booth beside Lucy who blushed and averted eye contact straight away. That's Natsu for you, thinks with his stomach and impulsiveness before his brain. Naruto. Natsu exclaimed with a large grin. I. Happy exclaimed as if in agreement with something. Why you know each other? Lucy asked, gaining her confidence slightly which was bordering on the confused. You could say we met just once or twice. Naruto answered before Natsu could and gave him a pointed look which Natsu seemed to recognize in that Urza usually used him. Naruto chuckled at the now shaken younger man and turned to a blushing Lucy. It's nice to see you again Lucy. He greeted with a smile, causing her to look up at him. Huh? H how do you know my name? Lucy asked with a frown before her eyes went wide. W what do you want? She whispered in fear, low enough so that Natsu and Happy couldn't hear, even with enhanced hearing. Naruto frowned at that wondering why she was shaking slightly. With a smile, he placed a hand on her shoulder to calm her down. I met you over ten years ago, when you were seven. He told her. Her eyes widened at that, but Naruto carried on whilst Natsu carried on eating. You were with your mother at the time. She was a beautiful woman back then, no one could say otherwise. He smiled in remembrance before carrying on. You're a spitting image of her. He said with a soft smile. Over ten years ago? She asked with a skeptic look. But, you would be what? Ten years old yourself. Naruto chuckled and shook his head. Don't always rely on what your eyes can see. He told her. You obviously know about me and my second name. The Immortal. Lucy exclaimed wide-eyed. I thought that it was just a name created because you've never lost a battle. She said in shock. Naruto shook his head. Either way, why are you here and not with Layla? He asked and Lucy realized he was telling the truth if he knew her mother's name. Naruto's only answer was for her to look down, clenching her short skirt with her hands. Naruto's eyes closed as he realized what the silence really meant. I'm sorry. Someone as kind and generous as her should never have deserved such a fate. He spoke with nothing but honesty, truly sad such a woman was taken from the world. Meanwhile Natsu and Happy both looked away from the two blondes, knowing that even with their usual knack of not understanding situations, and such that the current situation was not one to interrupt, even if they didn't know the blonde woman. Lucy smiled up at him with a tear running down her face. T thank you. She thanked though she was curious as hell as to how he had met both her mother and herself, and why she couldn't remember. Naruto smiled at her, seeing so much of her mother in her. Well, even if you have run away from home, Layla would be proud of the person you've become. He said making Lucy blush at the comment. With a grin he stood up and placed a hand on Lucy's shoulder. Don't give up on your dream, you never know, you may still achieve it. Lucy looked up at him in shock for a moment before H turned to Natsu. Natsu, I'll see you later. You too happy. Sure Naruto. Natsu waved slight, too focused on his food. Bye. Happy called out as Naruto left the restaurant. Lucy stared after him as the door shut. He knew my mom, when I was seven. Just how old is he and how did we meet? Damn, now I really want to join Fairy Tale just to get answers. And what did he mean by don't give up on my goal? Arg, I only just met him, and he's left me confused she growled in frustration before standing up and slapping money down on the table. I guess I better get going, but take your time. She smiled at them, turning away. Natsu and Lucy stared open-mouthed as Lucy began to walk away and jumped out of their seats to kneel before her making her blush and go wide-eyed in embracement. Thank you for the meal. Natsu shouted, head bowed so low it almost touched the ground. Thank you. Happy also shouted in the same position. Lucy squeaked and blushed heavily as murmurs rose around the restaurant, making her hug herself self-consciously. Kaya. Don't do that. She shouted at them in embarrassment. D don't worry you guys helped me enough as it is. She tried to stop them as she stepped backward slowly to hopefully escape. So we're even, right? She asked hopefully. I don't feel like I've helped you at all. Natsu admitted with a frown, unseen due to his forehead touching the ground. They a don't feel right happy agreed with partner. Oh yeah. Natsu exclaimed, shooting up with a large smile. 
With a large smile still on his face, he pulled out a piece of paper with Salamander's signature on it. I'll give you this. Natsu exclaimed, proud of himself for thinking of it. Lucy though, grew a tick mark. I don't want that. She shouted, slapping the paper away and storming out, face red of embarrassment. Argent Town Park. Lucy, after deciding she would find Naruto later since for some reason she felt he wasn't leaving town yet, decided to sit down on a park bench with her favorite magazine, The Weekly Sorcerer, news for that day. The Weekly Sorcerer magazine was a magazine that detailed all about guilds and their functions. Fairy tale caused trouble again. She asked herself, flipping the pages of the magazine with a hungry look at wanting to know what her favorite guild have done again. What is it this time? They destroyed the Devonthi family, but also destroyed seven other houses that belonged to the Tinspia Plahaha. She couldn't contain herself as she fell back on the bench, laughing her ass off and kicking the side of the bench, in hopes of calming down from her hysterical laughing. That's way too much. She shouted out, slowly cooling down enough to look back at the magazine and flip the page, breathing heavily. Oh, Marahin is covering the gravure fairy tales drawing card, Marahin. She said in awe she looked at the picture of Marahin. Unlike when she was just a small girl, she was now a very beautiful woman, with long, white hair and bright blue eyes, large breasts, and a voluptuous body. All the woman was wearing was a simple bikini, it may have been simple, but it left little to the imagination, water cascading behind her and on her right hand that she held up in a pose to let the water splash on her, I wonder if someone like her would be so reckless too. Lucy whispered in awe of the woman's body and beauty. If she knew what Marahin had been like before Lysanna's death, personality-wise, then she wouldn't have wondered if she could be reckless. Flipping another page, her eyes went wide. Oh my god. She squealed in amazement and shock. Urza Scarlet the Titania and Naruto Uzumaki the Immortal. On the page was something that had never been shown before, a photo shoot of the both of them. In the past, only Naruto had done the odd photo shoot due to demands, and such as his popularity rose. They had given Lucy many nights of happy dreams. However, Urza had never once done a photo shoot for unknown reasons, but no both of them were in the same photo. As she looked at it though, aside from the awe and shock, she felt one emotion she had rarely felt. Jealousy. Jealous of Urza's body, though she didn't think any less of her own body, in fact she was proud of it. But compared to Urza's she was no match. Her dark red hair stood out in contrast with her slightly tanned skin and black bikini that revealed much of her body, the lecherous smirk on her face that seemed unusual for such a position just made her look even sexier. What made her truly jealous was the fact that Naruto was stood behind her in a pair of wide of swimming trunks, his arms were wrapped around hers as waist, pulling her body flush against his, her own hands were resting atop of Naruto's comfortably while her head was tilted back against Naruto's shoulder. To anyone who saw the picture, they would say it was an intimate pose, since it looked almost natural for them. Tearing her eyes from the shocking and yet alluring picture, she saw a caption at the bottom. Just what is the relationship between the two S-class mages? She read aloud before sighing, squashing the jealousy within her. They look perfect. She muttered before sitting back up on the bench and hugging the magazine to her chest. I wonder how I can join Fairy Tail. Do I have to learn some strong magic? She asked herself in despair. I wonder if I have to go through interviews. She murmured with a sigh. Or can only people like Marahin, Urza and Naruto-san join? She asked herself. Despite those thoughts though, she beamed to herself. Mage Guild Fairy Tail. It's the best. She grinned. I see. You want to join Fairy Tail. Lucy squeaked and jumped in her seat, quickly turning around with a freaked look as she saw a mop of blue hair and caped shoulders sticking out of the bush behind the bench. However once she got a good look at the person's face, she relaxed slightly, though kept her guard up. A salamander. She stammered in shock. His usually smug grin grew larger as he began to climb out of it. Oh man, I've been looking all over for Yaoi really wanted to invite such a beautiful lady like you to our party on the ship. He announced with the same charming smile. Huh? She asked before standing up with a disgusted look on her face. Let me tell you first, your charm won't work on my anymore. The weak point of charm is understand as long as the person knows about it, that magic is useless. She told him, grasping her bag to walk off. I knew it. Salamander proclaimed. I knew you were a mage when our eyes met. It's okay. I'll be happy if you just come to the party. He told her, smile still in place. Lucy scoffed at the very suggestion. There's no way I would come to such a nasty guy's party. She declined. Nast? Me? Salamander asked, putting on a hurt look and looking offended. I'm talking about charm. Do you want to get popular that much? She asked with disgust. That's only a trial. Salamander said, waving a hand in a dismissive fashion. I just want to be a celebrity during the part. Lucy shook her head in part and began to walk away. You're an idiot, not even close to being a popular mage. Wait up. 
Salamander shouted, sounding like he was almost pleading for it. Yao went to join Fairy Tail, right? Salamander almost cheered when Lucy stopped completely. Seeing Lucy turn her head to him, his smug smile returned as he cupped his chin in a contemplative pose. Have you ever heard of Salamander from Fairy Tail? He asked innocently. I have. Lucy answered with a nod and stars in her eyes, a complete turnaround from a minute ago. You are one of the mages of Fairy Tail. She shouted, her mind coming to the conclusion that he had to be if everything clicked right. Salamander smiled as he jabbed a thumb to his chest. I am. If you want join, I can talk to the master for you. He promised with a grin. Lucy looked up at him for a moment in a daze before hearts appeared in her eyes, and she vanished from her spot to appear at Salamander's side. Naruto-san was right. It'll be a wonderful party, won't it? She asked, almost hugging him. Salamander grew a sweat drop at the switch of personality. Why your personality is easy to understand, huh? He asked with a chuckle. Lucy ignored him though, and stared up at him with wide, hopeful eyes. See can I really join Fairy Tail? She asked loudly. Of course. Salamander assured before holding up a finger. But please don't tell anyone about Charm, okay? He requested. Lucy laughed with a high tune and held her hand up. Okay. Okay. She exclaimed loudly. Like a crazed person. Salamander smiled smugly and gave a nod before turning around to leave, as his red carpet formed allowing him to jump on it. I'll see you at the part then. He waved over his shoulder as he flew off. Roger, sir. Lucy saluted up at the vanishing salamander before something in her brain clicked and she lost the starry eye look. A. Hack. I fell for a pseudo charm. She shouted in disbelief before giggling and smiling. I can join fairy tale. Woohoo. She frowned though when she thought about salamander. I guess I'll just have to be friendly with that idiot until I join. Though I could have just asked Naruto Buto well, she shrugged with a dreamy smile on her face as she skipped off. The lampus that had been by the bench suddenly lit up with yellow lights running along it before an explosion of smoke enveloped it. As the smoke cleared a few seconds later, Naruto stood there with a smile on his face. Lucy, 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 what am I going to do with you, huh? He asked in air, tuning his head to look down the path the girl left down. Layla was right about you, that fake salamander may not be able to get you into fairy tale like you wish, but I Connie don't break my promises after all and I don't ignore a woman's last words to me. He looked up to the blue sky as he recalled the promise. Naruto-san, I have a favor to ask of you, I don't expect you to accept it, but. Layla-chan, just ask me. Heh, very well Usi chan is a lot like me, in more ways than just looksy fear that one day I won't always be there for her, and her fathers become more obsessed with his business than family. Naruto-san, I fear that should such events take place that Lucy-chan will run away from home to follow her dream, and nothing will stop her from achieving it. Like I said she's a lot like me. Layla-chan. Naruto-san, you're a strong man, you saved me and my daughter after all what I'm really asking is, should you ever meet my daughter in the future then please help her reach her dream, I'm asking you as a mother that wants her child to become great and achieve their dreams, like I said, I understand if you won't accept it. Layla-chan wouldn't be a nice guy to deny a request. Heh, well I can't promise I will meet her, I do promise that that should I do, I will help her and also should something happen to you then, I will protect her, in your memory. Thank you Naruto-kun. Naruto sighed as he looked back down where Lucy had vanished too. Well Layla-chan, you were right, she is just like Yao unfortunately it seems like you was right about her father as well. He sighed as he began to walk to where he would be meeting Natsu and Happy. Meeting you here and now Lucy can't help but feel someone or something is setting up everything like chess pieces. Running his hand through his hair, he looked up and closed his eyes. What reason am I here for a Madarasu-chan? You said I was here to make a difference, and yet he already failed Lasana-chan, I failed Mira-chan, because of that as well he think he can't hide my full powers for much longer, not if the vibe I'm getting lately is correct shaking his head of such thoughts, he settled for other thoughts. I was naive back in Kanoha, I thought everything would go fine, that once I took Sasuke back, everything would be perfect, but now, I know we will do everything in my power to make sure no one else has to die. I just wish I knew if you had survived coming through or not Sasuke with a sigh, he placed his hand in his pocket and took out the magazine he took from the bench Lucy had been sat on. Flipping through the pages to a certain page, he smirked. I never thought you would have agreed to this Urza, you're more confident in these situations than you realized, huh? has lingered on the smirk and perfect body of his girlfriend. I am one lucky bastard. He chuckled before flipping back to the picture of Marahin and smiled softly and the just as equal beautiful woman. Was Urza telling the truth about Yao do you really feel that way about me? He asked the picture before shaking his head and snapping it shut. I guess I'll leave that to Urza said she'll speak to you, I just fear you two will fight like you used to. He chuckled as he vanished from his spot in a burst of speed. High vantage point of Harjan town. At night. 
Fa. I ate a lot. Natsu exclaimed as he walked along a pathway that overlooked the entire town of Harjin that was currently lit up in the night. I. Happy chirped from where he walked along the stone railing beside Natsu. The blue cat stopped as he looked in the distance to the sea. Oh yeah, Salamander said he'd have a party on a ship. He pointed to the ship that was currently out at sea. I wonder if that's the one. Natsu immediately collapsed on the stone railing, cheeks bulged and face a shen. Ugh you feel sick. He moaned pitifully. Happy stared at him before shaking his head. Don't get motion sickness just by imagining it he told his lifelong friend. Look, look. Natsu and Happy looked at the squealing voice to see two young women with dreamy expressions looking out to Salamander's ship. That's the ship, Salamander Sama's ship. Oh, I wanted to go to the party, too. Salamander? The other woman asked her friend. You don't know about him? The first woman asked incredulously. He's that great mages that's currently in town. Boy. Natsu. Natsu grinned as he heard the familiar voice and span around to face Naruto, who was walking over to him from the other side, the feeling of being sick gone. Naruto. Naruto exclaimed stepping away from the banister. I couldn't do anything in that restaurant, but I can now. With a toothy grin he slammed his fists together, his eyes turned to slits as he took a deep breath and cupped his hands to his mouth at the same time. Carrick no HMKM. Fire dragons roar, with a large exhale, Natsu snapped his head forward, releasing a long line of fire that stretched over the pathway and began to turn into a large fireball, crushing the ground beneath it. Naruto smirked as Natsu spewed a breathe of fire at him, it was usually like this with Natsu, since the younger man always called him a dragon slayer, since he could inhale fire like Natsu himself. Natsu had learned not to do it in front of Urza though. At that time, Natsu had tried to surprise him not knowing Urza was with him, Urza had initially came to the conclusion that an enemy was attacking Naruto and showing a protective side even he didn't know about proceeded to kick the living shit out of Natsu before realizing the poor dragon slayer could defend his actions and his body. Naruto had been forced to watch it all happen, and despite the fact that someone came out of it worse for wear, it had been a beautiful sight watching his love completely cut someone to shreds. As the fire roared closer to him, Naruto opened his mouth and began to inhale the fire like it was nothing. Naruto had to admit though as he was eating the fire, Natsu's fire had always seemed to fill him with energy. Unlike with Natsu needing to eat fire to use fire, Naruto could use the sun's solar rays to power himself up and allowing him to use fire, but if there was no sun, then he obviously had to eat fire to his god slayer magic or use his natural magical energy to use requip. With one last breathe, A swallowed the last bit of the fire and wiped the corner of his mouth with a toothy grin. You gotta learn your lesson Natsu. He informed the dragon slayer. I. Happy nodded in agreement. Natsu just smirked and crossed his arms. Is that any way to speak to a fellow dragon slayer, Naruto? He asked, insinuating he was the same. Naruto shook his head as he began to walk over to Natsu and Happy. Not the same Natsu, I'll tell you one day but not yet. He grinned as Natsu frowned in annoyance. Anyway, I'm not here about that, I'm here for other business. Natsu raised an eyebrow at that. I thought you were on a job with Yerza. He stated, stuttering at saying her name. Naruto nodded at that and turned to look out at the wide ocean. I had to come here for a sword I requested to be made a while back and Urza had some places she needed to check out before returning to the guild. He told him. Do you know what guild that salamander claims he's from? He glanced back to see Natsu frown. Fairy tail. Fair tail? Natsu asked, confused. Mfinu because I don't remember anyone like him in the guild. Naruto commented with a grin. We have an impostor on our hands and I don't particularly like the fact someone like him is from fairy tail. Natsu narrowed his eyes down at the ship. Happy, get ready he placed a foot on the railing as Naruto smirked at him. We're going. With a great leap, Natsu flung himself off the railing, high above the town, just as Happy sprouted white wings and flew at him, grabbing him by the back and taking off. Naruto smiled as he watched them fly off. The fake salamander has no chance up against the real salamander. With a grin, he placed his own foot on the railing and pushed himself off. He had a potential member to recruit. Salamander's ship. The ship was bustling life and music. Women encompassed most of the ship wearing expensive jewelry, stylish dresses and just looking their best. One thing that should have come off strange was the lack of any males. Away from the party outside, a certain blonde young woman wearing a very fancy and revealing black dress with a slit up the right side of the leg showing off her bare skin, sat on a couch in a cabin with Salamander seated across from her with a table and two glasses in between them. Lucy, huh? Salamander asked with a smirk. That's such a pretty name. Lucy smiled brightly, closing her eyes. Thanks. She held her hands together on her knees. Salamander smiled as he stood up, grabbing a bottle of wine. Let's toast with a glass of wine first. He said, filling her glass up. Don't you have to attend to the other girls? 
she asked with some hope that the creep would leave for a bit. It's okay. Salamander told her. I just want to spend time with you. With a click of his finger, small orbs of wine floated from the wine glass and began to move over to Lucy with a wave of his hand. Try opening your mouth, pearls of wine will slowly come in. He uttered with his eyes closed. Lucy turned away with a look of disgust and annoyance. How annoying. She exclaimed in her mind. Turning back around, she slowly opened her mouth but shut her eyes as sweat ran down her head. I just have to be patient. Patience. Patience. Just as the wine was about to enter, she snapped her mouth shut and stood up, slapping the wine away with her hand and splashing it on the table. What are you planning? Lucy demanded of a slightly surprised salamander. This is a sleeping drug isn't it? She narrowed her eyes whilst gritting her teeth. Salamander smirked as he lowered his head. Ooh, how did you know? He asked, honestly curious. Lucy scowled as she clenched her fists. Don't misunderstand, I want to join Fairy Tale, but I have no intentions at all to become you girl. She explained, a look of disgust directed at him. Salamander smirked cruelly, a different look to before. You're a bad girl. He uttered, lifting his head slightly. If you just were to sleep peacefully, you wouldn't have to get hurt. Eh? Lucy asked with a perplexed look she was suddenly grabbed by the arm, spreading them out and leaving her defenseless. She looked around in panic to see two large burly men holding her arms. Ooh, good job Salamander San. One of them said with a leer that nearly made her throw up since the man was the definition of ugly. We haven't had such a pretty one for a while. The other guy holding her right arm grunted out, making Lucy cringe. What's going on? She shouted in some fear as she saw more rough-looking men behind her. Who are you? All the men behind her began to look at her with lecherous grins that made her skin crawl. Salamander grasped her chin forcing her to look at him and see his cruel grin and malicious eyes. Welcome to our slave ship. I must ask you to remain silent until we get to Bosco, lady. He told her. Eh? Lucy shouted in fear and panic, her eyes wild and confused. Wah, Bosco hey. What happened to fairy tale? She shouted, trying to tug herself loose. Salamander laughed. I told you it's a slave ship. I brought you as merchandise from the beginning. Just give up. He told her as the two brutes holding her arms began to fold them behind her back, pushing her upper body forward slightly in doing so, making her backside more pronounced to the other's brutes glee as they leered at her. He he. One of them grinned, licking his lips at the very nice and firm backside. You thought this out well Salamander San. When girls are influenced by charm, they will fawn to become our merchandise. Another brute who was also leering, sniggered to himself whilst rubbing his hands together in excitement. It seems the charm won't work on this Ladiso we'll just have to train her a little. He he he. He sniggered to himself. Lucy looked down horrified at their words, wondering just what the hell she had gotten herself into. And no, this can't be what is he? She asked herself, tears at the edge of her eyes. How can someone do something like this? She froze as she felt a hand grasp the area around her hip, touching her bare skin with their fingers. She almost sighed in relief when she felt the hand pulling away until she realized she was missing the weight of her keys that had been hooked on a band. She looked up to see Salamander dangling her keys on his finger with a smug smile. HRMMM. The keys of the gates huh? I see, you are a celestial spirit mage. He deduced. Celestial spirit. One of Salamander's crew asked with a confused look. What is that? We have absolutely no clue about magic. Well, don't worry about it. Only contracted mages can use this magic. Lucy watched in horror as her keys were flung out of the window meaning, it's useless for me. As soon as he finished, Lucy could hear a splash outside indicating her keys had landed in the water. Tears began to slowly leak out of her eyes as she gritted her teeth. So this is a mage of fairy tale. She shook her head though as she thought of Naruto and him bearing the fairy tale mark, he was nothing like this man. Suddenly, Salamander had a metal rod with a thick metal insignia on the end, with steam coming off it and a red edge to hint at the heat of it. Let me brand you a slave first. It'll be hot, but please bear with it. He smirked evilly, ready to receive a beautiful new slave. Lucy grit her teeth as tears rolled down her face, dripping from her chin. Abusing magicating on Piaplin performing slavery. She looked Salamander in the eye with all the anger and disgust she could. You are the worst mage ever. She shouted. Salamander smirked, unfazed by her comment, and stepped forward to brand her, but before he could, the ceiling exploded as a shaded figure crashed through, sending wood and dust everywhere, whilst getting everyone's attention, as the figure landed on the ground, shrouded in smoke. As the smoke began clearing, Salamander's eyes went white in shock. T the brat from earlier. He shouted in shock. Natsu. Lucy cried in shock, wiping her eyes of her tears. Natsu looked fearsome for a moment as he stared down Salamander before he collapsed against a wall. Ugh, no, I can't take it. He whimpered with dazed eyes. Eee. 
Lucy screamed, her jaw dropping to the floor at the pitiful display of him whimpering against the wall. That's lame. Wh what's going on? Salamander asked, confused himself, glancing up at the hole in his ceiling to see the night sky. Why would a brat fall from the sky? He asked himself confused. And he's already got motion sickness. One of his crew deadpanned at the shaking figure. Lucy, what are you doing? Lucy looked up to see Happy flying in through the hole. Happy? Lucy cried out in amazement. I was fooled. He told me he'd let me join Fairy Thailand I she trailed off when she noticed the wings on the cat's back. Wait did you have wings before? We'll talk about that later. Happy exclaimed, swooping down to her and grabbing her by the back of her dress tied around her neck. Let's get out of here. He shouted, flying back up with an odd Lucy in tow. Whoa. Lucy exclaimed before noticing Natsu still huddled but dragging himself up slightly. Wait what are you going to do about Natsu? I can't carry two people at once. Happy answered simply. Oh dear Lucy muttered with doe-like eyes as she saw Salamander hold his hand up with fire slowly encircling it. I won't let you get away. Salamander shouted at them. Prominence Typhoon. The swirling fire round hand exploded in a blast of spiraling fire at Happy and Lucy. Fortunately for Happy he just made it out of the hole, smacking Lucy against a board in the process though, just as the blast of fire exploded out of the hole into the night sky. Oops. Happy winced as he heard Lucy's head connect with a board but continued flying nonetheless. DCH. Salamander turned to his men with an angry expression. Don't let that woman get away. It'll be a problem if she reports to the council members. He ordered with force. Yes sir. They all shouted, running out of the door and pulling out guns, aiming at the flying cat and taking fire. Whoa. Happy swerved slightly as bullets flew past them. Guns. hi -ah. Lucy screamed, trying to cover herself and avoid getting hit. Lucy, listen. Happy called down. What is it at a time like this? She shouted back up sounding exasperated. My transformation effect has worn off. Happy stated simply as his wings vanished and they both fell into the wide ocean. Shitty cat. Lucy screamed as she hit the water. Did we get her? One of the shooters asked with raised eyebrows, looking down into the part of the ocean where Lucy and Happy struck. As Lucy began to slowly sink lower into the ocean she was stuck in her thoughts. Is that what fairy tale is like? I don't know what to think anymore. No, I have to rescue those other girls first gaining her footing, so to speak within the water, she began to search for her keys. It didn't take long as she found them hooked onto a rock. There you go. I'm glad it stuck on a shallow place she thought, swimming faster to her keys and picking them up. Back on the ship, Natsu was slowly pulling himself up the wall. Fairy here asked out. Huh? Salamander raised an eyebrow, turning back to the sick-looking mage. Hale Natsu growled, narrowing his eyes and grinding his teeth together. Outside, Lucy managed to swim upwards and out of the water. Fa. She gasped, taking a deep breath of fresh air, while absently taking notice how her dress was now clinging to her skin in more than revealing ways. Here I come. She exclaimed, holding out a golden key that looked like a small vase of sorts, with a letter U printed on it in fancy writing, twice on each side of a white background at the handle of the key. With a thrust, she slammed the key into the ocean. Open the gate of the water bear. Aquarius. An explosion of water emanated from where she stabbed the key, which soon revealed the intended spirit in all its glory. Wah! Happy exclaimed in amazement after just resurfacing and seeing the spirit with his own eyes. Aquarius was a mermaid-like celestial spirit. She had a long-scaled blue tail, large breasts which were barely held up with a revealing bikini top. She had two gold armlets, and she wore a jewel circlet. She wielded an urn in both hands with water contained in it. I'm a celestial spirit mage. Lucy said with pride. I can use the keys of the gates to summon celestial spirits from another world. Lucy turned to her summoned spirit and pointed at the ship. Now, Aquarius. Use your power to send that ship back to the coast. Aquarius turned barely opened eyes to Lucy. TCH. She made the distasteful noise before looking away slightly as if uncaring. Lucy grew several tick marks. Did you just say TCH? Huh? She shouted at the water spirit. Don't be so picky about something like that. Happy exclaimed at Lucy. You are such a noisy kid. Aquarius muttered with annoyance. Let me tell you one thing. If you drop the keys again, I will kill you. She threatened with a glare. Lucy smiled shakily at her spirit and nodded quickly. I am sorry. She exclaimed with wide eyes. Aquarius seemed to accept that as water gathered in her urn from all around her. Pulling it back as energy exploded out of her, she slashed downwards. Or it. She screamed, sending all the collected water and even more crashing into the ship, and Lucy and Happy at the same time, waves upon waves rushing along. Don't flush me as well. Lucy screamed as the rushing water blew her along as well. 
The rapid water waves struck the ship, immediately blowing it away with its great force and sending it and its crew into the port where the ship skidded along the docks, ripping the ground apart as the civilians of the town ran from it. Wah well, what is it? One shouted in shock. A ship stormed into the port. On the ship itself, Salamander braced himself against a column, breathing heavily. What's going on? He questioned, looking around at his wrecked ship. It stopped Salamander, and his crew looked at the source of the voice to see Natsu picking himself up off the ground. The rockings topped. He looked at the crew and Salamander with a toothy grin. Outside, Lucy had wound up on the ship's deck, holding onto a railing. At the moment, she was glaring at her summon. What were you thinking? How could you flush Embalong, too? She shouted. Aquarius palmed her face in frustration. My body flushed the ship as well. She grumbled. Lucy did a double take at that. Were you aiming at me? She screeched. Aquarius didn't answer and just stared at her. Don't call me for a while. I'm going on a trip for a week with my boyfriend. She informed Lucy before smirking and looking almost mocking. With my boyfriend. No need to repeat that. Lucy shouted in anger. Aquarius was about to leave before Lucy grabbed her suddenly, getting a frown from the spirit. Wait. I need to ask you something. Lucy's face turned serious, getting a raised eyebrow from Aquarius. You was my mom's spirit before Shumso, did you ever meet someone called Naruto Uzumaki? He said he knew my mom, I want to know how. Aquarius stared at her for a moment, but Lucy could see surprise in her eyes. Naruto Uzumaki, huh? He saved you and your mother many years ago when I could not. That is all I know. With that, Aquarius faded away to return to her world. Lucy stared at the empty gap for a moment. He saved us. She shook her head, bowing to think about it later before grinding her teeth at her spirit's actions. She's so selfish. She spat out. You don't really get along, huh? Happy pointed out with an oblivious look. But I did it. Lucy proclaimed looking down at the port where people were gathering. Once the military personnel hear about it and arrive at the scene, all the other girls will be safe, too. She clapped her hands together with a big smile. I'm so nice. Happy wasn't listening and had already turned back in a jog. Ack. We forgot Natsu inside. He called back, running to Natsu. In the cabin that Natsu, Salamander and the man's crew currently was, Natsu was now stood up, but taking deep breaths. Suddenly the door slammed open revealing Lucy. Natsu. Are you okay? She trailed off when she noticed Natsu's completely serious gaze directed at Salamander. Brat you shouldn't get on other people's ship without permission. HRMM? Salamander said, scratching the side of his face without a care in the world. Natsu didn't say anything except beginning take to take his coat off. Salamander turned to the two large brutes that had been holding Lucy earlier. Hey. Throw him out, quick. He ordered. Yes sir. On oh, one Lucy exclaimed reaching for her keys. Leave it up to. Don't worry. Happy interrupted her. I forgot to tell you, but Natsu is a mage, too. Eh? Lucy exclaimed in shock. Natsu took out an arm from his coat sleeve and threw it away leaving him in a sleeveless waistcoat. Are you from Fairy Tail? Natsu asked Salamander as the two brutes charged at him. What about it? Salamander asked with a cocky smirk. Naruto kept his eye narrowed. Let me take a good look of your face. He stated, looking at him sharply until the two brutes got close enough for Natsu to simply smack them away with a slap, sending them careering into a wall of the ship and through it. I'm Natsu from Fairy Tail. I've never seen you before. He declared. Wah? Salamander shouted in shock and horror. Eh? Lucy asked in shock also. So, he and Naruto-san are both fairy tale. Yup. She shrieked at the unexpected voice and span around at the doorway to see Naruto stood there looking in at the soon-to-be battle. Naruto-san. What are you doing here? She asked after calming her racing heart. Naruto chuckled and nodded towards the serious Natsu. To see Natsu kick this fake's ass. He grinned as stepped forward slight, going unnoticed by the other occupants of the room. Watch Lucy, this is a true fairy tale mage. He said, placing a hand on her shoulder. Lucy looked at him with a confused look when he put his hand on her shoulder, but turned back to the soon-to-be fight. Wath it Mark. One of the brutes exclaimed, seeing Natsu's fairy tail brand at the top of his right arm, just below his shoulder. He's real, Borisan. Another shouted to the former salamander. Idiot. Don't call me by that name. The now correctly named Bora shouted. Bora, Bora of prominence. He was banished from a mage guild called Titan Nose several years ago. Happy said, now on Naruto's left shoulder, closer to Lucy. I've heard about him committed several thefts using magic and got banished. Lucy remembered and looked at Bora with a look of disgust, something that was becoming common. Naruto nodded at what they said. He's nothing but scum. He practically spat surprising Lucy who looked up at him. People like him deserve to rot in a cell or worse. If you want to be part of a guild Lucy, then these are kind of people you will meet, he paused to look down at her with a stern look. 
are you sure you're ready for that? Lucy looked at him for a moment wondering what he was getting at before deciding to answer with the truth. If I don't become part of a guild, then I won't be able to help anybody and take down the bad guys. She told him, face set in stone. Naruto looked at her for a few moments before smiling and nodding. Well said Lucy he said with a chuckle getting a relieved sigh from her. Lele was right about Hirsch will follow her dream no matter what it settles it then. Natsu having heard what they had said, grit his teeth as his pupils contracted in anger. I don't care if you're a bastard or a good person. But I can't forgive you for using our name. Or laughed as he built up purple flames in his hand. Whatever, you're just an annoying brat. With a thrust of his hand he sent out a large blast of fire with a skull's face. Red skull. The blast of fire struck Natsu, pushing him back slightly and overcoming him. Natsu? Lucy shouted and made to run, but Naruto's firm grip on her shoulder stopped her. Just watch. He told her calmly getting a frown for her. HMPH. Bor laughed, about to turn around when he heard coughing from the fire. Awful. Natsu's voice came from the shower of fire. Everyone, except Naruto and Happy, looked on in shock as they saw the shady figure of Natsu eating the fire like food. What is it? Are you really a fire mage? I've never tasted such awful fire before. Both Bor and Lucy screamed in incredulousness as they now saw Natsu clearly munching on the fire with his hands. Phew. Natsu exhaled a breath of air, wiping the side of his mouth with a grin. Thank you for the meal. Wa 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 is he? Boris stammered, unable to put into words what he had just seen. Fire? A crew member yelled. Did he just eat fire? Fire won't work on Natsu. Happy stated clearly from his perch. I've never seen such magic. Lucy exclaimed. Now that I've eaten Natsu trailed off as he bent his knees and held his arms out at the 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock position, head bowed as energy began to build up around him. I can feel my power. Here I come. He roared, snapping his head up as he began to breathe in any residue fire and gathering his own. Hanbi? One of the crew mumbled before snapping his head to Bora. Bora-san, I think I've seen him before. Huh? Bora shouted, looking fearful at the large gathering of power. As Natsu began to cup his mouth with his hands, the same man answered Bora. Rosy hair and scales like scarf no doubt. Has thrill Natsu, now cupping his mouth with hands, breathed out a large line of fire. Salamander. Peric no HMKM. Fire dragons roar, Natsu yelled, as the line of fire completely overwhelmed everyone, destroying everything and blowing everyone away in a maelstrom of fire. The salamander. Lucy breathed in awe making Naruto chuckle from beside her at her odd and speechless expression. Natsu vanished from his spot and appeared above Bora, his flaming fist inches from the man's face as he looked up. Remember it wealth is his fairy tale's mage. He exclaimed as his fist connected with Bora's face smashing him into the wood floor which he bounced off a couple of times, smoke wafting from his charred body. Eating fire and punching with Firaz at Realimagic? Lucy asked with awe. Dragon's lungs spew flames, its scales melt flames, and its nails are dressed with flames. This is an ancient spell that converts the body of a dragon's constitution. It's originally a dragon interception magic. Happy explained for Lucy. I see. Lucy responded with a dumbfounded look. Dragon Slayer. Naruto carried on. Igneal taught Natsu this. He watched as Natsu followed his attack up with a flaming kick to Bora's face, sending him flying off the ship and destroying the portion he had been stood on. It's a rare form of magic that is known as lost magic. Lucy turned to Naruto and Happy with a perplexed look. It's weird that a dragon taught someone a dragon interception magic isn't it? She asked. But you don't doubt it at all, huh? Happy asked, pointing at Lucy with a large smile and wide eyes. Dragon Slayer Lucy looked up to see Natsu with flames around his fist and coming down at Bora. Amazing amazing, beauty were overdoing it. She yelled as Natsu's fist slammed into Bora and destroyed a section of the ship instantly from the destructive force, sending Bora down to the port. Naruto chuckled and brushed sawdust from his hair. This is fairy tale Lucy, rules and laws are there for us to break. He grinned as they heard shouts from the port. D the port is all messed up. I. Happy chirped. Don't give me an eye. Lucy shouted at the blue cat. Ugh Bora groaned from where he had landed on the port after being thrown by Natsu's destructive attack. With a growl, he pushed himself up from the ground. I won't give up here. He shouted, standing up hastily with fire swirling around his fist. Prominence whip. Swinging his arm and Natsu, fiery whip shot at the dragon slayer. Natsu frowned from where he stood on the ship, looking down at Bora on the port. Seeing the whips coming at him he held out his left arm, letting the whips wrap around him harmlessly. If this is all you got, then take what I've got. Tugging on the whips, he yanked the almost beaten to death bore at him and held his right hand out which exploded with fire. Carrick no Tekken. 
Fire Dragon's iron fist, he roared as Bora's bloody and beaten face came into view, and with a mighty swing, his fist slammed into the man's face, creating an explosion, sending Bora rocketing away from the ship and port, crashing through several buildings nearby, causing them to collapse on themselves. Naruto grinned as he and Lucy with Happy still on his shoulder walked over to Natsu. You did good Natsu, but I think we should get the hell out of here while we can. He told him seriously. Huh? Natsu asked, looking back at Naruto. Wh what's all this ruckus? A shout rang through the port. They all turned to see a battalion of soldiers charging towards them. They didn't look happy. The military. Lucy exclaimed in shock. Before Lucy could do anything else, she was suddenly yanked down the street to exit the town. Crap. Let's run. Natsu yelled, being the one to have grabbed Lucy as soon as he saw the battalion after them. Why me? Lucy cried out. Naruto, running alongside them smirked as he looked at the flailing Lucy. You wanted to join Fairy Tail, right? Lucy looked at him with wide eyes and then at Natsu who grinned back at her. She gave a small nod and Naruto chuckled. Then come with us. Just those words brought a large smile to her face. Okay. She shouted in glee. Naruto grinned and gave a nod to Natsu who responded in kind before they shot off, too fast for the military to even help to catch up. Well Layla, she did it, now it's all up to her to become more powerful, you do keep my promise, I will protect her he vowed once more as he gave a lingering look at Lucy, who was positively glowing. The be continued in chapter 4. Fairy tale. Urza returns. First real mission. What if Hashirama and Mido give all chakra to Naruto in fairy tale, and thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.